just start off, boys. Uh, your background. So, Tony, you grew up abroad, didn't you? How did you, yeah, manage, to come, how did you manage up down here? How did you get down here then? Perhaps? Well, I was born in Glasgow, mate. I obviously stayed in Glasgow. Oh, so were you, aye? Oh, nah, I was born in Glasgow, mate, and ha- half my family still are in Glasgow, mate. It was just my mum and my gran. Uh, oh, right, and okay. Something kind of moved to Arbroath, so I was there. Went to school and that in Arbroath, played for clubs yeah. in Arbroath. Um, and then when I was like 15 or 16, we moved back down. I think it was 16. We moved back down oh, anyway, because okay. my gran, as I say, my cousins are all, they're all from here anyway, my grand and stuff. So I, all my family's from Glasgow, mate, so that's why. Um, all right, I just okay. moved to you, Arbroath when I was younger. Did you play for Arbroath, no? I wouldn't even say I played, mate. See, but I, I was there, uh, but it wasn't like uh, the way I was at Dumbarton, if it makes sense. It was like the uh, 13 uh, I don't even know. Schoolboy school stuff, aye. Aye, it wasn't even proper. Uh, but it was decent to be fair. Maybe a cell, Martin, is it your feet? Bell, Bell's Hill, no? Is that right? No, have I got that right? No. Moving me around. Clyde Bank. Clyde Bank. Then Toker, the big man's feet, then Toker. Oh, fuck, so you were, I used to walk came for games, didn't you, after the games? I used to walk, I walked into the Dumbarton games, man. Yeah. Aye. Aye. The madman, it wouldn't surprise me if he walked to Bells Hill, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I get Bells Hill, I don't know where I'm going at, fair enough. But uh, how do you, how did you both end up Dumbarton? Who uh, who picked you up for Dumbarton? Start with you, McNiff, who, uh, how'd that come about with Dumbarton? So, it was strange, mate. So, I used to, I used to just enjoy playing my pals. So, I had a few trials when I was younger. A couple of teams like down United and that, but um, I just enjoyed playing my mates. So every time I went to right. play, found it a bit, I don't know, it was just a bit static. And like, see all the boys, they weren't really in it for, their, for a team Aye. more Aye. It for themselves. So you couldn't really go in and, and have the same the same banter or the same laughs. It just felt a bit too serious and I didn't enjoy it. So I stayed boys' club um, and my boys' club team played on a Sunday. But all right. Day, my brother's amateur team would play, and this was when I was about 15, 16. So I used to go and play with his amateur team on the Saturday morning. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was one of the boys that played there, Kenny. Tony will know him well, but Kenny played yeah. with him. And he was a striker. And it wasn't until me, I'd played all year, and it wasn't until the end of the season, he just told me, like, look, I'm a 17s coach at Dumbarton. Oh, is that Kenny Black here? Kenny, yeah. Yeah. Aye, no Kenny, aye. Aye, aye, aye. So aye, aye. he just, aye. I didn't know all year, when they say a word about it, but then eventually he just told me I was this big hot shot coach at Dumbarton. <laughs> hot shot coach. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I, if you want, like, I didn't really like pro youth, but I thought I'd give it a go, because I knew he was sound and he was like, digging up the boys and stuff, uh, saying aye. like, because yeah, I did tell him I didn't like pro youth. Um, mm-hmm. And then, and mate, it's just, I saw it started there. Obviously, Tony was there, Brannon was there. Uh, it was just totally different for the other pros I'd been used to. Like, mm-hmm. I went to change, like, Tony Slaughter and all the boys. Like, I'd never <laughs> <seen pro-use. laughs> made this speaking. But, <laughs> like, all the boys were not laughing. It was just a good vibe for the, for the get-go. Aye. Like that, and that's kind of what made me stick there. Aye. Maybe I'll sell Tony, mate. Uh, I can always remember, right? See, when uh, <laughs> Kenny used to say to us all the time, I, I've got this young guy, centre half, he plays with his brother's team, right? Doesn't like, he always just wants to play with his pals. I think if I'm going to try and get him in, and I'm just like, ah, all right, Kenny, fuck, say, say this for that one. <laughs> and he used to say it all the time. And I'm like, honestly, must have been, I think I played the last few games for you, the four games. It was like March time. Mate, <laughs> since August, <laughs> He said it, he was saying it for ages, and I was like, ah, He's just making this guy up either that or he's hopeless and he's not bringing him in. And then eventually, eventually brought you in to be fair. But Kenny, man, I love that guy, honestly. I remember oh, even okay. even me, like, we used to go to Balak, obviously, the next day I was the bar. Um, went, to, went in a place called the back room. Oh my god, I think I was I maybe I maybe have been in the under 19s at this point or the first team, right? And, and he was still the coach at the US. And I oh, went in and I was seeing my coach oh, and I seen him there. No. I seen him there. And I'm drinking and he's like, what are you doing? And I'm like yeah, all right, yes, oh, what a guy, man. I love that guy, Kenny. Oh. Aye, great guy, Kenny. Aye. What a buzz, but to be fair, mate, because obviously I'd moved from our down to, down to uh, it was a uh, Bond Hill, obviously, next to the Martin. My mm-hmm. cousin played for Queen's Park and he just gave me the number because uh, I was actually going to try Queen's Park, but obviously, the Martin was honestly 10 minutes in my house, so I tried that aye. first. Mm-hmm. Uh, I went down to trial with Scott McKenzie, was a gaffer. Um, so just asked me down on trial mate and I went down at that point in the under 17s 
I think they'd I think they'd maybe had an overhaul. Scott had just went in. He was trying to get rid of the boys uh, and get other boys in. So it worked out perfect when I went there, mate. He was looking for mm-hmm. players and uh, just mashed it <laughs> hanging there to the end, mate. <laughs> That's good then. So obviously then, like you say, you've got a bit of team spirit already. You've got boys like Brannans. Yeah, was Daly in that team as well? Daly McSorry? Yeah. Uh, he, was he's more as he was uh, not being in our team as well? Was he that more at a young age? Was Always, it? mate. Always. Uh, never Always. changed. Did he go to Snapchat? No. Nah. Oh, he's still, he's still <laughs> just walks a bit shouting and moaning at mate. It's fucking brilliant, mate. Honestly, but yeah, like yeah. it says, um, I think I, I signed for it. I was, I came to them battling just to begin a 20, uh, 2008, and I think, um, you, I, I've signed at the same time you boys came up for 17s to 19s. Yeah. I think that team is a, I don't know, it was a decent, decent team. We actually done well that year, didn't we? We finished the semi final. League Cup and stuff like that, and then a few of the boys like yourselves end up getting around in the first team. Um, what was it? What was your actual first thoughts? I mean, John Joyce, anyway, when you first came up to that pre season, Bells and Partner, that I'll ask you, but Niff, what was it? Because obviously, yeah. you came up for 17s to 19s, and you can't get that sniff about first team stuff like that as well. And you're I'm just getting about how the season was. It was Bristol, just like, Bristol easily like. the hardest pre season I've ever had, too, because it was just. We didn't even train on a flat surface, mate. It was a hill. I've seen you think about it, like, I've actually done possession games on, like, a big slanty hill across <laughs> it. I know. I don't know how we've done it. It's the bit of times you get uh, this boy trying to do a fucking shank, mate, to the other side of the park, and Joyce is like, what the fuck are you doing, you lad? Trying to trip me on a fucking 30-yard hill, man, do you know? Yeah, exactly. That's a cue. And then it goes up. But, okay. yeah, I just... I couldn't speak Kyle, I just really, in terms of time, like, he's training me, he usually got me the first I've ever been as well, like, I, you can criticise, like, you can say he's training, but it did get you in a, a right good shape, everybody was saying, we, that's how we did do so well that year, so the boys are first fights, um, I mean, fast forward into, like, the mid-season when we had no games and he took us to, I remember that school he took us to, man. Ah, you won Clyde Bank? Yeah, it was like new football, like it all was. Aye, gym session, wasn't it? Up the benches on that. Circuits. Do you remember it being two minutes long? Or was that just me? I just made that up. Yeah. I was thinking oh, that... it was two minutes long. You remember the big boy? Remember the big guy? Uh, it's long. Is, it, is it Grady? Remember they bought a boy in from film or something? Grady? <laughs> I mean, I'll try to get his name. Oh, mate. Yeah, oh, mate. <laughs> He's up, Granny, he's up, big, <laughs> nah, big boy can fool him, man. Absolute beast in the circuits. And I'm just like, ah, what is going on here? Oh, oh mate, honestly, man. The guy. I do, if oh, I can keep up with you two and they're running that. Um, I've been doing all right. That boy came in. I was like, for fuck's sake, mate. But was he near nah. all, was near all went, you know? Nah, I've changed for the time, I think. Aye. Good bit of battle. Aye. Aye. What were you but... thinking, Tony, you first met Joyce? Eh, uh, <sighs> was that long ago, mate? Nah, to be fair. Aye. The Kenya, probably numerous times to be honest, mate. But <laughs> I, I love the guy. I love the guy. Uh, he was always on your case, right? Regardless of what you done, mate, it could be fucking unbelievable one game, and he would always uh, pick you out for something done. And I, I don't uh, mean that in a bad way, but it was good uh, to have, mate, because he definitely uh, shaped you. And like McNiff will say, if you're going to the first team, you need somebody like him that's coached you and try to tell you exactly what you need to do and work on. Otherwise, you're going to go in there thinking that. You're fucking ready to play every week when you're nowhere near it. Yeah, so I loved him, mate. Aye. And I think that him and Aye. Charlie worked well because Charlie Aye. was nice tonight. And don't get me wrong, Charlie could be fucking go off oh, his head. Nuts, right? But Aye. at that time, when you had Joyce and Charlie, the two of them mm. were like uh, opposites. But nah, I loved him, mate. I loved him. Uh, I remember him always being like trying to have a laugh and that, but he just, it was very serious when it came to the training. Aye. 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 I, I fucking feel to him, mate, the first one. Honestly. Do you remember Dale? Aye, Dale. Oh, Dale right, Steele, man. He was there for... <laughs> I don't even know how long he took me back. I remember him being there maybe half the first year, I don't know. And then he left. Aye. Aye. I just remember he's, he's a nice guy, well, mate. I feel so bad. He's probably, a nice guy. Probably well. guy, mate. But seeing he was like, mate, you do fucking press-ups for no, like, doing a stretch properly and all that, mate. 
Honestly, uh, that's when. <laughs> so you be did that kid. I like open your groin door at. He's like, why are you facing that way, Mark? Because that's the way I'm looking. He's like, no, ten press ups and what? What? Honestly, and obviously you met, used to date a T all the time. You met yes, well used to watch T's face, man, when Dell shout him. You like, she got fucking that boy fucking do him. I swear, I'm not a T. In Dell's defence, we T probably meant to do it to do press ups, <laughs> man. That's the <laughs> Oh no, mate. mate you, you see He's, T recently? No, mate, walks a bit like Robocop, mate. He's like that, mate. He's fucking is he still guy. Huge? He's huge. Oh, uh, mate, aye, mate, he's, mate he, he goes to the gym, mate. Quell, he's fit as fuck now, mate, man. Bye, but still brand new, mate. Same, mate, same boy, he, man. He was like that all the time, mate. And I remember, uh, I remember he came in one time, he's off, he's not he used to always say, I, I got these injections to stop me sweating, man. See, see when I think back, I'm thinking, oh, that does definitely steroids to you. <laughs> <laughs> he's, still, he's the absolute beast the gym man is he playing football um, I think he was playing junior for a bit but, but he bought an Ikea now he's like, a, he's like one of the top dogs in Ikea apparently over at Bray Head now so I think he's packed it in now he's got a win and all that now and he's great, see, so. great guy great guy team, Aye, brilliant, brilliant boy he's yeah. my big boy you beat him in the gym you sit and talk to him for half an hour do you know what I mean do you ever remember that what <laughs> Just serious all the time. I felt. <laughs> 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 how did Nicky used to tell? How did Nicky, man, my funny? Like, Nicky, talking cheese, man, just fucking wind each other up. Yeah, oh, Nicky, you got your carbon tonight, you know. That. <laughs> mate, I know. Nicky still, Nicky still, this day talks about carbon and silver and anything else he went back in the day. And I'm like, Nicky, you stayed in Glasgow, mate. We were fucking 50 minutes from Glasgow, mate. We're not going there. We're going local. You still talking, uh, Nicky? <laughs> I mean, I, I'm like one of the best mates with Nicky, man. What a guy, yeah, honestly. Yeah. Oh, my aye. God. He's the he's exact same, except he's lost his hair. <laughs> <laughs> he's losing his hair. Nah, he's losing it, mate. He needs to shave it, to be fair. But what a guy. Well, but still hanging. Oh, he's still, mate, I will never forget one of the days Nicky came in. And obviously, it was just sales. I don't know if she was around at this point, And it was uh, Dumbarton, these changing rooms. So it was me, Sharky, oh. I think Sean Wallace and stuff there. And Nicky comes in and goes, I think Nicky was either going to uni or about to go to uni. And he's kind of like, from Bear's Den, Porsche, and that walks in. He's got this big white rug, big white carpet jumper on, man. And everyone just slaughters him. And he's like, I think, I think it's quite nice, guys. Oh, my God, man. Still to this day, mate, we do not let him live it. We just flag him all the time, Aye. mate. He's unreal. Oh, I'll never forget. Some of the stuff Aye. used to wear shocking, he was mate. Brilliant, so, man. Even Don't nowadays, remember. mate, still wear shocking stuff. Oh, <laughs> what a guy. What a guy. Shocking. Tony. Aye. Uh, Who was it that, um, see, the hippie, I think. I Who was it that talked to him? I talk and then he just told him to get straight out. <sighs> no, Nicky. Was it Nicky? Joyce was doing a team talk. Somebody was doing a team talk at the hippie, and I'm sure it was Nicky. <laughs> No, nah, I thought that was a story you were going to say. No, um, I in. Probably, probably was Nicky, mate, to be fair. I'm sure Nicky just put Sean Bimmy's bag, like, what was that? I think it's a bit, actually. <laughs> it was a I probably would be Nicky. <laughs> I'm sure Joyce is saying, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Joyce, he would have to be man, he was ruthless, wasn't he, man? Oh, he would, mate, he would. He was ruthless, that man. It was the bar, he's like, butter. Eh? Train there on a Friday night, get balls of bucket for it, you know that? Mate, <laughs> honestly, mate, because obviously, see when I so obviously you started at start of nineteens, mate. I was there for the seventeens, and Aye. Scott McKenzie was the coach, right? And I just he was still there when I went in, so obviously I didn't think anything of it because he was still the coach. Obviously, start thinking about the shark and that leaving, or the or the young team are there at the bar and East, <laughs> uh, drinking. Because obviously it's away around the back of the fence and that, so they couldn't get caught. They're drinking in there, and then I find out that Scott. It'd actually been bottled off one of them. He was trying to get them off the pitch, and one of them had hit them with a bottle and all that. And I'm like, oh my god, man! But uh, oh, yeah, absolutely wild. leaving him to walk by and four to the man with the football stuff on the uh, Martin training kit. Because oh. you just used to get a train home, not didn't you? Nothing about the train station too, you know? Aye, aye. To be fair, oh, mate, I was probably just jealous. I was there, instead, wasn't there instead of training. <laughs> I'd rather be there drinking a bucket than training. Aye, <laughs> yeah, true, mate. True, I was mate. shouting there. I was shouting. I'll be, I'll be finished at nine o'clock, lads. Give me a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Aye. So that season, um, probably the big, the main thing that sticks out for me was that we played Rangers at Ibrox. So that's probably our kind of first taste of that kind of level of football. Um, memories for that day is probably Tony, you playing Take That, Greatest Day. Aye. 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 Aye
the changing before the game. <laughs> Obviously, we used to up the midnight team singing that. But yeah. that day, we, we, gave a, we gave a good game, didn't we? We like, finished 3-1, but 10 minutes to go, it was 2-1. They had a good team out there, like Greg Wild, John Fleck and all that, Danny Wilson, a good, strong team out game. I was always a sub, as usual, but used to boys, used to boys started, didn't you? I, mean, I think that was a uh, strong team, Danny Wilson, John Aye. Fleck and stuff, mate, so... Aye. Right, right, good team. If I remember, Cookie scored a free kick. I'm sure. Aye, after that, had, a, had a couple of wee tough chances, but aye, they were a, that was a good team they had. Mate, that was very good. Uh, looking aye. back at it, but good experience, mate. Right, good experience for the show, anyway. Who do you yeah. remember that team enough? Well, I remember me. You were midfield, didn't we, Tony? Yeah, yeah, mate. Uh, it was. Um, I was to the old because it was something we weren't used to that season. Aye. You know, the heavy we were playing at just local parts, so I taste actually getting on a stadium and. And getting that, I think we probably all done the same thing. Like you know, preparing the day before differently than you normally would and all that. You just done everything. Aye. Aye. How, were you, how, how were you preparing that night before? What was that? Who were, were, were you night before? Victoria's up so cold sheet. That was just when we played that one. Man. That was just when. Ah. Well, man, I, I, experience. Well, man, like Tony says, there's a lot of good players there that you know, want to have good careers and that as well. So, you know, uh, that's, that's the thing. I think that started off for me because it was Joyce and that, obviously. And that's the thing. Uh, I think Alan Adamson was the, the first team manager at the time. I don't think Chappie was a, um, I'd, no, be half, sure. I'd, I'd be playing centre half to be fair. Obviously, not a lot of people knows, but I was like centre half all through the Barton up to the first team. Uh, uh, just that day Joyce had put me centre mid obviously because they had like a fleck it was me McNiff and that. I think it was just what, just absolute big units in the middle of the park you know? <laughs> uh, and, uh, and uh, I'll never forget because obviously when you say that I- I'm laughing at the-, the Rangers thing because I say we always slag Nicky about his clothes and that right and I always slag him like shave your head like, what are you wearing and all that <laughs> and you always come back you always come back and say to Sharky though I remember I played at Ibrox with Tony you never oh my god he hates it he hates it mate because you know Sharky, mate, his his whole family, he's a massive family, mate, and they're all at Rangers mad. Aye, so aye. his brothers were there, his mum, his whole his whole family was there. And uh, I don't even think he was on the bench that day, was I think he was in the stand, mate. So Nicky oh, so, because obviously Al, Al Adamson had to put his son on the bench who wasn't even really playing for us. And Joyce aye. had to say, Look, pff, I like I, I, there's nothing I can do. He's playing. Uh, he's on the bench and Oh, Nicky slags him all the time. I feel so bad, mate, but he just slaughters him all the time because he never played. And I'm just like that. Oh, <laughs> um, so, um, so, did Martin, you, you got your debut that season, didn't you? The first team? Aye, so it was, was Albion Rovers, I remember that. I was definitely, I can't exact date, mate. It's probably bad that I can't tell you that, but I'm sure. Oh, oh, what place? Season. Hope it wasn't it, Albion. It oh, yeah. was, so oh, often how I remember it being like a free one up or something came when I go and he called me on me. I don't think I got a touch of the ball. Like it was just I put me in centre mid and you know, it's like it's just going over my head, over my head. Like, up, uh, was, uh, that's how I probably don't want to remember it's not a, a debut uh, you want. Because <laughs> I didn't even see the ball, uh, but um, uh, I've been around that season. I think that was around October time, and then I'm sure uh, it was maybe a, a month or two later. When I'm sure that was kind of. Uh, how'd you go to Chappie? Really well, mate. Aye. Uh, 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 obviously, that we'll probably go into that later on in the show and stuff. But like, I uh, like for the very first goal. Like even when I first went to the seventeens, mm-hmm. played Clyde that night. I don't know if you remember it, Tony. We think they beat them four one or something like that, and that was my. For them, aye, because I scored. Um, I, I didn't think I played that well. Like, I was just like a guy who had said, I'm like, mate, and he was just aye, like, mate, a, huge, huge. So, what I was doing was just like, it was just battling with him. I didn't, I didn't see much of the ball, it was just like fighting tackles, fighting heels with that guy. And like, I came up, I think I had done too great, and it was Chappie just came like right up and says, that like, uh, he had Kenny with him at the time, which was strange, so having Kenny come over. <laughs> Like tell you what, Kenny, if he doesn't make my first team, you're you're at a job or something. Against <laughs> 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 like, in the nicest way, but like, yeah, I was just Aye. like, I don't know what to say. Like, okay. but it was good. Like from then on, like I say, like, it was just great. Obviously, getting my, getting my first contract. You always appreciate I think the first manager that gives you. Aye. 
Aye. I think the thing about Dumbarton at that time is they were, they were doing the bottom leagues, but they had a good first team. But at the same time, I think a lot of the boys, you know, the team especially had that kind of pathway. There's a lot of boys where if they weren't the, making the bench or they weren't the getting, getting a game, they were at least getting in with training them or they were getting come game on a Saturday. And I think Charpy was quite big on that. That like he mm-hmm. involved boys in the first team. I don't know if it was like with Aaron and Klein stuff like that, but I think at that time, Dumbarton, I think that's maybe why your team done so well because they kind of maybe excelled in the games where we were playing against the younger boys, but again, they've had that experience of being in the first team too. Because, yeah. like, you look at that team you had about, you're, you're used to Daly, Baranin, uh, Rich, Richie McKillen as well. Half mm-hmm. a team that was in mean, the first team at one stage of that season, do you know uh, what I mean? Uh, so that was the thing I thought. Tony, when was your debut then? I don't know, mate. I don't, <laughs> don't know. Know. I don't know, mate. I actually don't know that. I remember the first time I was ever called up for the first team, right? But I don't actually know my very first game, mate, which is shocking. I don't know. Honestly, couldn't tell you, mate. I, would, I, need to. Uh-huh. I, I can remember a game. I don't think it was my debut, but I remember a game when I played centre half against East Fife and I had a big boy up front and we got pumped 4 0 and I had a shocker. Oh, fuck. But, <laughs> right. but I, was, I think I was only 19 or something. I don't think it was my debut, mate. So I think I played a couple and it was good, mate. I can't remember his name. It was decent up front. Um, and they beat us 4 0, mate. East Fife had a good team that, that time. I think that's when they had a bit of money. We fell in the lower uh, leagues. So, uh, mm-hmm. But I remember uh, the first time I ever got called up, I think I was 17 and I had to go. I always remember I went away with Berwick and this is when they had like Chizzy, Ben Gordon and stuff. And I was, I was uh, working in the council at the time. And I was out on the Friday night because I wasn't with the oh, wasn't with the first team. I wasn't supposed to go with the first team on a Saturday. Um, so the guys from the council were like, oh, just come to the local, go to party for a few beers. And I'm like, oh, I'm, like, oh, so I'm not old enough. I didn't have an idea of that. So we just went to the pub. So, and I'm, I remember Jim chatting for me and I'm like, Fuck, so I answer, the, I answer the phone. And it's like, in a pub, in a pub obviously I'm pissed. So I don't even really notice. There's music oh, and I, play, and I, I feel bad, right? I feel bad if he, if he listens to this, right? But I'm listening to it and he's like, he's like what are you doing? What are you doing? I'm like, eh, it's my wee sister's birthday party. She's got loads of people in. Oh, mate. But to be fair, the guys, I was worked with a guy, uh, two guys, Luke and Les, to be fair, I, and I say pissed, mate, I must have had about four pints and I was absolutely blistered, but I was only 17. Uh, the two of them, mate, they were like, I was like, oh, fuck, I've just been asked to go to the first team, someone's injured or something, I've got the first team at Berwick. And I was like, I don't want to leave here. <laughs> but they took me, they, uh, they were like giving me loads of pints of water and then, Oh, Lesley's right. sister had took me home and all that for the game so I wasn't too bad the next day but oh, I just remember Ben Gordon got well he went down a couple of times and I was getting told to warm up so I'm thinking oh no I'm going to make my debut here 17 or something I was like I've been a piss last night I'm going to have a shocker and Ben Gordon was up and then he was off and Jim Chapman shouted me over and I'm like oh no oh no and he's like, just, just make sure you're ready make sure you're ready and I'm thinking oh here we go I can't oh. even, I think Chizzy scored I think he might have won because Chizzy scored he was a strike at this point as well oh, and, uh, I remember going away and there was a goalie he was trying to not slag the young boys but get on their case and put a wee bit of pressure and Chizzy used to say you know Chizzy like me he used to be like fuck off I'll leave the young boys alone and that fucking old bastard uh, which I love Chizzy mate but that was the first time I ever got called up mate and I was out the night before and I was like oh no man here we go but I, I can't actually remember my very first game mate I'd need to ask I have no idea and it feels like I'm actually ancient I can't remember I feel like I'm too old to remember but it's bad <laughs> <laughs> so uh, when did Nicky Devlin kick into the team you were there when Nicky Devlin burst into the team weren't you Charlie so uh, I uh, what do you think of him? Because he was a proper... I, f- I remember him being about the bat, at least in that, but he's younger, wee bro. A couple of times he started training for mm-hmm. the 17s. And he, I remember him saying, all right, boys, he, I think he was being keen, whatever. And he, he started training with the 17s. And then I remember when I came up my broken ankle, he was training with the 19s as well. And he was just... He was a fucking machine. But you can mm-hmm. tell he was fucking developing, developing. I remember he got his fucking my my memory of Nicky was he made his debut or something and he got a report in the paper that he made a some Maradona run ever since uh, mate he just went like that I don't know if he used but he's uh, ended up getting that move to Motherwell and stuff like that as well um, did you just play with him man? did you just play with him yeah mate yeah uh, I'm trying to think when it, like, I'm sure it was when we were in League 1 anyway or was it the venue uh, League 1 so would have been like I don't know if I had a full season before he came, because I think when I first got a contract was when we went for the third division to the second. That was when I got my first pro contract, and I don't think he actually joined until the season after that. Yeah, so okay. maybe in 10, maybe. 
But Aye. I think I still still playing with the nineteens at that point, so I played them quite frequently. Still Aye. like them before he, he actually good, joined. He, he, he was mate. good. Aye. Because he was as a, even young, he was younger, wasn't he? A year or two younger. Aye, very good, mate. Just um, a few years, mate. Aye, I think a couple. Uh, Aye. Even that that run, or I don't even know that run you're talking about. But um, he used to, he, mate. He, I don't know what he's like now. He limited, but he, he used to do one of the runs in every game. But he used to Aye. always just yeah. say he just never scored. But he used to do that, mate, because he just couldn't get in. He was Aye. strong, quick, Aye. Um, physical for a young boy. But I actually, I actually thought when he went to Mullerwell. Like he he could easily go and play as a young boy in Motherwell without a shadow of really, I, yeah. really, yeah. I thought I thought he could have made I didn't even obviously I don't know much about the Motherwell team, but looking at him I yeah. thought there's no way there's no reason why he couldn't play for the first team. And obviously uh, they'll look at different, yeah. they'll bring him in for the Barton first team and play with use. And then I think he'd done his knee, his ACL. Aye, and then aye. took a wee while to get back at it, mate, and then obviously went down the wall. So he's done done brown to get back at it to be aye. fair and where he's at, but aye. Nah, aye. I, I consistent in the room, man. Aye. 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 Mm-hmm. Aye, he's done well. Definitely. Aye. Um, so, how would you sum up your times at Dumbarton then? Because he's... Um, Tony, uh, did you both play in the, in the playoff? Did you get promoted to Division 2? Yeah, mate. Uh, did you go school, yeah. no? Three goals, mate, in the four playoff games. <laughs> 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 as soon as you ask that, it was... <laughs> you said that right already. <laughs> Three goals in the four playoff games, mate. I'll tell you exactly how they went. <laughs> uh, three goals, mate. What I was, honestly, that was the was that, that period, I... mate, was unreal. Because, I mean, if we t- I'm positive at the start of the year, we were not doing great. And then Jack Ross came in. Right? I, I know, like, is that, I remember breaking, I think I broke my foot. Before the in the first pre season, so I think I missed the five games. And I remember playing the sixth game and we get beat five one or Sterling or something because we cookie was playing with Sterling, cookie right. demolished. And I think that was us six defeats out of six. Aye. We lost the first game, like, and we were rock bottom of the league. Aye. So it was, and I think you're right, I think the turning point was Jacko, man, like when Jacko came in. Aye. Major league. Came in. Jack, Jack Ross, aye. Aye, uh, yeah, mate, on you. Who's the gaffer there, Raffer? Who's the gaffer there? Nah, uh, no, assistant. He was assistant, mate. Oh, assistant, was it? Aye, was it? Aye, yeah. How was he? He drugs in that good, was it? Aye, amazing, mate. Amazing, on you. Was it? Aye, good, brilliant as well with the boys, to be fair. Uh, with the older ones yeah. and younger ones, for obviously, he hadn't chucked football long before that, you know what I mean? So he's still re- been in it recently uh, enough. Um, it was unreal, mate. Especially, obviously, me and McNiff were a bit younger, so learning for him was class, the drills he was doing. Um, that year, I think, as McNiff says, we struggled maybe six defeats. Then I remember going to Tory Glen and Jim Chapman had been like, took us into the office and I was like, the boys maybe knew what was happening. The older ones, I had no idea. And he's like, I'm leaving. Like, kind of, that's me away, kind of sad, Fuck. leaving, whatever you say. And I was like, man, this is like, as McNiff said, the first manager to give you a contract, and you're thinking, well, what happens here? Um, no. Alan Adamson took over. No disrespect, mate. Not nothing uh, was happening. Nothing was happening at training. Rubbish, terrible. Brought Jack Ross in, and he took everything, mate. He took everything. Um, and I think that's why we ended up flying. To be fair, the boys were absolutely loving it, and we uh, went on a, a living game and beating one or something like that. And we're flying, so it was good. Quality. I, I, I remember. I just remember the standards jumping, like straight uh, from coming in. Like he's pre- like sees organisation, like his preparation and things, mate. It's like uh, I didn't like it. Even like now, it's I still find it hard. Maybe maybe John Rankin, like when he does training, has got a similar uh, motor. I know you. Oh, yeah. Jacko was like he would go into training, everything was laid out for you. It was just for a part time oh, team, he raised like a full time standard. It was brilliant, and I think you could notice it in the players, like they were becoming more professional. And I think that's uh, where the result all of a sudden switched for. You know, bought me the league to then push him for playoff places. Just with, with wee things, he was always big on changing little things. And it just Aye. made such a as I thought. Did they bring any players in or was it just a case of just the way things were working in the training? Did they bring any, any of your senior players in or that? No, or just a case of what you say? Dar going Mark Lamont. I can Mark Lamont. I think Dar's came even later than Jacko. So I don't even think, uh, I think that was later on. Jacko always said that had. Part in doing that, so obviously he knew him, so he brought him in. But it wasn't like right away, he brought him in. That was near the near the playoffs. He actually came in on it four games to the season. So, uh, uh, it shows you. I mean, Alan Adamson, I think Alan Adamson got a good team together that summer. Like mm-hmm. he was one of Brian, like Kev, Nico, and 
fronts and all that, was it not? That uh, Aggie and stuff, would that not have been Chappie? Would that not have been like during uh, the I'm sure yeah. Chappie had already gone by that point, mate. Was it? Uh, well, would have been Kevin. Aye, I'm sure I... He brought in, so he brought in like a good core of players that, you know, eventually, as you can see, like... A decent. Front of, like, front of was probably not front. You think how many goals he scored through that year and we Aggie for midfield. Like, it was a good, a good balance to the team. Like, me and Kagi and Big Kev in the middle kind of come with uh, well in there. Aye. Uh, nah, Jack, Jack will change that. I mean, it was class. I always remember the playoff games. It was the... Was it the first ones against our growth or the final? I don't know, but I just remember... You remember this I mean, if you had the big projector and it had like, all the goals and everything for the season on it and we watched it for like 10 minutes, mate, it was class because you, you're going into the games buzzing because you're like, fucking hell, what a team we are, man. What, to be fair, I say what a team we are, it was like, all the wee Aggies free kicks and punts scoring, but it's still good to watch. <laughs> <laughs> still good to watch. <laughs> so, how, so, do you look back to the battle formula? I mean, because obviously your first club and stuff like that, and that's basically where all began, but you've always got an affinity for the, for the club, eh? I know, mate, just short of it. It would have been good to, to maybe get a feet like that, but no, nah, it, like, it was it was a good place to learn. Your, you know, it was good to actually get games and you'll know, play that level. Um, you know, I've mm-hmm. you know, Chapman was the reason I got that opportunity and even like look further back like Kenny and stuff. So I've got to be good for them to actually get me there. Um mm-hmm. but great to, to play at those levels and then you'll have the chance to even play championship for even though it was a short time. Um you know, I could get next to the club's good at history as well. It's a good, it's a good club. Um, it's a very good club. It was good. All right. Maybe I'll Tony. Same, mate. Exact same. Loved it. Obviously, uh, for the 17s to 19s. First professional uh-huh. contract. And I think when you're at that age, like I said, what you say with Joyce, Charlie, Kenny, even Danny Bislin who came in, uh, coaches at that, Scott McKenzie, that kind of shapes you, I think, as a young right. boy, what, mm-hmm. what you're going to learn from in that. And, even the boys at the first team, like, I mean, if I'll tell you, McStay, Stephen oh, Murray. Dennis what a player, Stephen like Murray, good, man. Like, what a player like, he was. Like, like good players. And you look at that, and sometimes if, if we're going there as young boys with the wrong group of experienced boys, that could put us off, or that could change the way we look at it and the way we look at young boys. Because they were so good with us, mate, I like to think we pass that on. Once we get to that age, we're not quite that age yet, right enough, almost. Hi, pushing on me, man. Pushing on me. <laughs> So how how did you move to Morton Club about Tony? But I'm all right. I may mean, ask you as well. But did you put it on to Peter Silk at one point? Peter Silk Junior, was that right? Am I that, that, was my, that was my first year at the Barton, I think. That was, was it your was first good. year at the Barton? All right, okay. Uh, well, my first my first years, I think, was it near the end? The, 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 this is what I mean, mate. This is, I went to Peter's Hill just for games. They were struggling. They were in the top junior league, but they were struggling near the bottom. And I always remember, like, it was brilliant because I used to go there, good training facilities and that. We used to drink yeah. after away games and all that in the bus. But I just remember, like, they're looking at me as a young boy and on loan from Dumbarton, trying to get games. They're fighting relegation, whereas, not that I didn't care about it, right? Because I just wanted to play, but they're probably looking saying, well, this boy's going back yeah. to Dumbarton. He doesn't, he doesn't give a fuck. He's going to Dumbarton. So we need boys here that are going to fight for it. I don't know. That's where I kind of look at it now. Mm-hmm. Um, but I enjoyed it, mate. It was good, obviously, as you say. It's a, it's different the juniors is different man. I know Aye. a lot of people say it's, it's no much difference in that but it, it is um, but again it was, it was good today because I went and played Aye. games there I think back then it was different it was proper like junior football now it's Aye. Aye, football. there's a lot more plastic yeah. parts for a start and stuff like that um, I'd probably say my bit the bar sent me out to Mary Hill and I was just exactly the same kind of scenario when they were struggling and who would they all play in a game they need to win? A young boy for the uh, Martin who's not me much to a boy who's actually uh, part of the squad, whatever. So, I can't come for there. So, Martin, again, how'd that come about then? Was it, was so, it the start? Was it middle, middle of the season? Or was it no, no. So, it then it was after we got promoted. Um, right, okay. It was after we got promoted. Um, obviously, I say that the, it was basically the three the three goals, mate, in the four playoff games because <laughs> I'd actually played, I'd played through the middle, right? I'd played through the middle and obviously Big Kev Used to work away and stuff like that. So he would come back whenever he would <laughs> work away during, whenever he would whenever he would like work away during the week, I'd play. Uh, and then as I say, Adamson would always it was always revert back to Big Kev anyway, because to be fair, he's a great player, but it was always revert to him because him and I had a partnership from some of our experience and all that. So it was actually Jack Ross that was kind of like pushing for me to get a game. Um, and we had Ali Graham, young boy Ali Graham on for Falkirk who was playing right mid. 
came up with injury and I was just thrown in. I'd, as I said, I'd been playing through the middle or sometimes centre half, and then I got put on right mid for Ali Graham. I think we scored, beat them 2 1 first game, and then I just stayed there for the, the full duration of the playoff games. Um, and from then on, that's what happened. I, I, Dumbarton would obviously try to sign me, but I, I knew I wouldn't have played much in this championship under Al Adamson. I knew that, mate. And I, I, I spoke oh, to Jack yeah. Ross a few times about it, and he used to say to me, I didn't go full time till I was 22, 23, so there's no rush in doing it. You need to just think. And at that time, I'd never been full time, so I was like, what do I do? Do I stay at Dumbarton and not really play because Al Adamson's there? Logan, see if Jack Ross was there, I probably would have stayed, mate, because right. I, I feel as a young player, Jack Ross kind of liked me at that point, so I felt that like he would give young boys a chance and he could have more than a player. But at the time, I just felt it was right for me to go and give full time a bash, so that's why I went to Morton after the playoff games there. Um, mm-hmm. saying a two deal so it gave me a chance to actually develop she went to Morton it was a bit of an overhaul wasn't it could you get rid of a lot of boys and they bought a lot of players in like big peas and what came in that year didn't they and yeah mate so uh, Willie Dyer Pizzo uh, Hardy big Mark McLaughlin uh, Kev Rukovic mate what, to be fair what a team and this is what I think obviously it's weird mate because at that time I had an agent and he was saying you could go to this team but it's a lot of young boys uh, you got a lot of young players you might I don't know how he's going to do this year or he's saying he said to me or Morton are interested he's like Morton will guarantee to be finishing that top four they've got a right good team and I was thinking Aye. oh fair enough but it, looking back on it now as a young boy would I want to go a team full of experienced players where they might want to play or should I have went to the young with the young boys where they are more likely to play you know what I mean um, but obviously at the time that's what happens you, you, you get agents and stuff and the, you listen to Aye. them and you're like Oh, mm-hmm. finish top four. Yeah, I'll take that. But don't get me wrong, mate. I, I learned a lot. It was, as you say, it was a right good team uh, for that year. And obviously, mm-hmm. we just missed out. Um, so it, it was good mm-hmm. for me personally. Obviously, Ted's yeah. up, Steph Sterling that we played against that day. I got Steph Sterling like, player, I brilliant yeah, player, unreal, unreal. So uh, we went learned off boys like that, mate. They'd been full time for mm-hmm. five, ten years, maybe, and that was my first year. So it was good for me. Was it Murray that signed you? Aye, aye, uh, Murray, Murray. Uh, how'd, you, how'd you go in with him? <laughs> weird mate I think it's like, it, like the thing is I laugh and I joke mate right and I saw people that but I don't mean I, it doesn't mean I don't work hard and stuff I just felt like he kind of look at me and some managers kind of look at me as if uh, he's not caring he doesn't work he's just taking the piss he's no listening he's no doing that but it's just because I'm enjoying myself mate but mm-hmm. I, it was a hard one mate because I felt like I was mm-hmm. kind of never not, not, Put this way, I scored three goals in my first three games. The fourth game we drew 0-0. You scored your debut, didn't you? Aye. I scored my debut, scored three goals in my first three games, 0-0 the fourth game, and then I was dropped. And I'm like... So, Mata. I just felt like... And then and then I was kind of put centre, put right. In fact, the, the day we drew 0-0 uh, in the fourth game, I was put as a holding midfield player with Tidzer and Steph Sterling in front of me. And you know what's like, you said, boys, you, you speak about it anyways, your team, and even that week at training, we're all saying it should have been any of the two sitting because they're unreal on the ball to sit and get it, and uh-huh. me and the other one in front. And um, so and after that, I dropped and then I was in and out. So just like, I felt like I didn't get a good run, obviously, to get consistent enough, um, which was which was the hardest thing, obviously, you, you want to. And then I'd, I tried to go on loan, and he just said, no, look, we're, we're happy with your progress and that you've been doing really well. You've played uh, more games, not maybe not enough games as you would like, but more games than we maybe thought you would with this kind of team. Um, oh, we're man. looking to kick on next year, which is good to hear, but at the same time as I probably was looking to get games, if you know what I mean. Uh, Jackie was just telling you what you wanted to hear at that point, or have you just... I don't, it's hard, mate, because uh, as I say, I was in and out. It wasn't like I was completely bombed all the time, the stand and that, but mm-hmm. it was hard, mate. It, you, right. looking back now I think when you're younger you're a little bit more naive to what the managers say but when you always start to realise yeah listen I, I know right. I know why you're saying that and I know what you're going to say but yeah it was well, it is right. what it is mate I started off alright and I've right. done alright for what I could have done and mm-hmm. with the games right. I got right. what you say it was a good team and you finished second that year didn't they finished second in the championship it was a yeah, hard league so it was like Fissel, Livy, Hamilton they not league yeah, it, was a, it was a tough league yeah mate, it was a, I think even Dunfermline and that were good that year. Um, right, good teams, mate. Um, 
and that was the year, the year after, I think, we'd done the playoffs. Or the, the, so we just missed out in playoffs. There was no playoffs at that time. I would have made the playoffs. And obviously, mm. I'm not saying we would have went up in the playoffs, but we had all the boys from the SBL or played SBL with HP oh, nice. to maybe stand us in good stead. But just missed out, mate. I think I went to the last, I don't know, however many games and we, we just faded away. I think we got beat off Party Thistle. I always remember the fact, probably the current point we're talking about Steph Stullen. We played Party Thistle and beat them and uh, he broke his leg that game. And obviously he missed out, mate. And I, I just felt at that point he was he was just coming into a game and scoring and dictating games, basically. That's what he done. Aye. I think we kind of struggled after that, mate, because he, he was some player. And once he broke his leg, he kind of really got back to it. So just missed out, Aye. mate. Obviously no playoffs, but Aye. yeah, disappointing Aye. to be fair, because it was obviously right to SBL and I'd, I'd had the two years, so I would have been there regardless. <laughs> <laughs> so who, who'd you go with that team and who's the characters in that? Who would you... Oh, mate, so, <laughs> honestly, mate, that's what I mean. It was a team experience, boys. Oh. Had, like Craig, Craig Reed and that. Um, Hardy, <laughs> big man, mate, or Hardy and all that. So it was good. Um, even the young boys, had young boys, like Kyle Wilkie, John <laughs> Housman, you know, that, that are quiet and done that itself. But, mate, there's so many, like you say, Pizzo, Big Dinky, and that are just all bonkers. And I always remember. Big Pizzo, aye. I always remember, like Dinky. Uh, Kev Rukovic used to come in and he's in good shape, to be fair. And obviously, he's older than me, so he's in good shape. Had his white wife fronts on, man. He's dancing about kicking his legs up in the air and before the dressing room. That's like he's pretty ritual. And I was like, What is going on here, man? Like, my, first year, my first year full time. I'm just thinking, Fucking hell, this is madness, man. Is this what full time football is, man? So, I'm loving it. <laughs> no, he... So, was, was it the second season that he's beat? He's killed out of the Celtic, he's beat the man out of Park Reap. Is that the second season then? I mean, so second season, I think obviously that year before they kind of went for it with the experienced boys. Aye. Then got rid of all them, got rid of all them kind of makeshift, if I'm honest. Just went and got like Slovakian boys, a couple of English boys, big Belgian lad up front, Kaba, what a guy, good guy. He's now a rapper, by the way, what a boy. He's a great <laughs> guy. <laughs> Aye, what a great guy, to be fair. And the thing is, mate, you, it's hard because you, you've got these guys, I think Cabs was 19 or something, so you've got these guys moving to live themselves from a different country, but no one else, Aye. and they're kind of like, yeah, they're playing football, mate. But they're kind of stuck after training. They're kind of stuck themselves, mate. So it must be hard for them to do that and like commit. Aye. But that was a year, mate. Again, that, that's the kind of year he said to me, "Oh, we're looking for you to kick on." And I was like, "Right, here we go. Great chance for me to play." Not got a lot of experience, mm-hmm. boys, as such as that. So good chance for me to play. Um, struggled in the league. Struggled in the league. I think I played. I think I played the last six games up to the Celtic game. So I'm like that. Here we go, Celtic Park. Yeah, I've been playing. Uh, Doug Emery was on one side, I was on the other. I was like, here we go. It's set. Like, I'm going to play. Uh, got to the Celtic game. I was dropped on a bench. And this is what I mean. Like, I knew, like oh. it, was just, it was just like, it was just throw me out. It was just like, I didn't feel like I was ever going to really get a run of games. And Aye. David O'Brien, who Obes, he was a great guy. He's a character as well. I love Obes. He, he went on in front of me, but I think he would just come back from injury. So, he hadn't played and went on, but after 20 minutes, dislocated his shoulder. And then I went oh. on. So I was just like that. So I went through the thing of, I'm playing, I'm playing. I'm not playing, like, what the fuck's going on? Aye. And you think, when you're playing Celtic like you're thinking, am I going to get on? Are we going to get pumped? Is there any point? Am I going to get on? What's going on here? Aye. 20 minutes into it, he goes over from a tackle, dislocates his shoulder. And I get called on, I'm thinking, oh, fuck, I'm not ready for this because <laughs> oh, I'm obviously in my, head, in my head. In my head. Because in my head, I'm thinking... I'm playing and then it changes and then it's nil nil at this point. And I'm thinking, oh, here we go. I've not started nil nil. They're going to score when I come on. Four nil be oh, <laughs> here we go. It's my fault. Uh, and obviously, it went to, mate, I remember because obviously they had a good team and it was like, got to 90 minutes, mate. And we were all starting clapping. We were like, well, yes, come on. And then it's like, it's extra time. We were like, oh, fuck. <laughs> so we, thought, we thought it was a replay, mate. I thought it was a replay. We were clapping. I'm like, Adam Matthews, can, can I get a top? And he's like, it's extra time. I'm like, yeah, but, right, cool. <laughs> uh, so extra time luckily uh, extra time obviously we got a penalty do again they scored and then we beat them uh, but what a buzz again it was a it was a tu- weird mate because Tuesday night with the game on the Saturday we were struggling uh, in the league with the game on the Saturday so we couldn't even like make the most of it mate but see, I t- see, if, it now, see if it happened now I'd be on it for days mate I wouldn't care for the game on Saturday you must have been alright come on Tony mate, I wasn't like... mate I wasn't uh-huh. No, mate. Really? Mate, oh, unreal. I know. On. Shocking, mate. Tuesday night, mate. <laughs> couldn't even go out because we're struggling it, in the league. What was the silly team like that night? Strong team or that? 
Cool, mate. Basically, a full team except Samaras at that time. Van Dyke oh, played, fuck. Brown, Van Dyke, Stokes came on, Commons came on, so they didn't start. But like Rogic played, obviously, he was a bit younger than uh-huh. Rogic McGeek were the only two boys that were, weren't really starting every week. But the rest was like uh-huh. Adam Matthews, Van Dyke, uh-huh. Brown, uh, uh-huh. Beaton, I think. Stokes team, team, man. What was, Van, uh-huh. what was Van Dyke like? Just a unit, mate. Just uh, a unit. Don't think you're really Could you tell how good? It, could you see how good he was? Like, think you'd be where he was the new back then, no? So that obviously one performance hard to tell, but it's, it's hard, mate, because obviously the, uh, at, the, at that time they like they had all the balls. You know what I mean? They had all the balls uh, five four, but it's uh, just I just remember, mate. I was uh, standing next to him, like uh, I'm quite tall. I, I, back then, I was uh, even skinnier than now, but I'm, I'm not. <laughs> Mate, one of his legs are the size of both of mine. I'm just thinking, wow, man, thank God. I do not need to be <laughs> <that ball." laughs> so, yeah. I was just thinking to myself, wow, man. I didn't, you, you'd never imagine him going to Liverpool at that point, right? But he, he was good. Um, right, it didn't help. It didn't help that he was next to Effie Ambrose, who used to try and dribble by everybody, to be fair. So it made him look better. <laughs> <laughs> fair play, mate. So, you ended up getting the sack. How did that season finish up then? Was it? Was it? Uh, oh, mate, I, don't, I, don't know, uh, I don't know what was worse for me because uh, natural law came in me fair mate, and I, I swear. I mate, was my next point, and I natural came in. I all my mates used to say to me, "Oh, get naturals, get naturals." <laughs> things, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, "Yeah, I'm the same team as him." You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, he was good as well, mate. He was good. He used to come in and because obviously he played at Rangers, you would think he'd be a wee bit like. The down you bet me, he wasn't used to get involved in the two touch, the shooting and all that right before training, so it was it was great, uh, good laugh. Um, mm-hmm. And I just say, obviously, I grew up supporting Rangers and that, mate, so aye. playing with someone like that is like a dream come true when you're a young boy and you're actually playing. Ask if he's autographing that. Aye, it's like that. <laughs> right, natural buddy, what's happening? Right, uh, it was good, mate. But I, I don't imagine you Kenny, 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 Kenny Shields came in, mate, and again, because we were struggling and he'd beforehand before they cut the budget they basically went down the route of a couple of boys from Slovakia Belgians kind of young boys a young boy from England looking to like give games and like have a platform kind of because like Thistle had done that the year before Aye. and then when Kenny Shields came in because we're struggling they just gave him money and he went and got Gary O'Connor Rowan Vine um, the boy David Robertson Barry Mackay on loan so they kind of went and done that they got a boy from England that was bought from Spurs but had never played a first team game brought for Spurs for that hundred grand or something so then they bought him in never really played and that, that, again it just kind of throws me out mate and Ken, Kenny Shields mate I don't know I don't know why maybe it's just me but Kenny Shields didn't really like me either so it didn't go too, too well <laughs> that's why I went on to Queen's Park Aye uh, go back to that in a minute mate mate now if you're selling mate Swift so Dumbarton yeah end up at Annan so was that Charpy that drove that one through for you or was it Aye so else? Well, I'd, I'd signed Two year with them, Barton, I think, or the young boys, similar to Tony. I think we all got offered kind of similar two year deals when we were up to the championship because we were young in that. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I'd signed my two year and first six months we weren't doing too well in the league. Um, I was kind of in and out of the team, did have a couple of injuries and things, but um, all in all, you know, Alan Adamson didn't, I think he lasted in November, December time or something, and the board decided to get a do him. And, and, and I thought the next step would have been Jacko to come in because Jacko had taken, he was taking over the training the next session and I think he was to take part in the next couple of games. So he was going to be managing it and there was rumours that he'd already applied for the job. So the boys were automatically thinking like Jacko's going to be getting the job here. Yeah. I think we mm-hmm. obviously love because of the way he was when he first came in. Uh, Aye. So it was a bit of a strange one like when it when it all kind of broke out that Ian Murray get the job because we need to that's right, aye, Murray, aye. I really had heard kind of where that came from. There was, n- there was no, like, rumours about it. It just, a news flash. Ian Murray's got the job. And obviously, I kind of done a wee bit of digging, like, what he'd been doing the last couple of years. I think he'd been in America or something before getting the job. So All right. everybody was a bit strange with that. And it was just bad luck for me that around that time I, I was injured. It's when he first came in. So, like, for the first maybe two or three games, I didn't really get a chance or even training. I, like, New managers coming in doesn't know anything about any of them. He probably knows some of them. Like I'd imagine he might know who Prince was and like a few others. Yeah, but boys like myself would have had to have, have shown him more. So it was quite annoying that when he first came yeah. in, I was injured and I, I didn't really get that chance. Um, 
And then by the time I eventually get fit, that was when he was January to it and he was starting to bring in his own players. Like I remember Scotty Linton coming in and um, there was a few others. He'd signed Smith as well, Stephen Scott Smith, Stephen Smith came in. So he'd signed a couple of boys kind of around my position area and I just thought, I had a kind of chat with him because I didn't see myself getting any games at all, you know, with the new players he'd brought in because they were around that area. And he eventually said, like, I could go out and loan just with age arm. They would let me go out to the end of the season. And because I had another year in my deal, they would let me come back and, and see you after pre-season. So it was just weird that after I had that conversation, it was a Dumbarton game. Um, I was just sitting in the stand watching it. And I think it was either, it might have been at full time or half time, whatever time it was, I went down to the reception area. And at this time, Chappie was actually still, he was still at Dumbarton. He was doing like gardening leave or something. So yeah. Hang the coyster. Ah, that's all right. He was doing that the garden. He's doing the garden. He comes over and he just says like, "Which, which your thoughts and that?" And I was like, "I can't get any chance. I might need to go out and loan." And he was just saying, "Well, if you want, I'm due to get this signing job next week." So he did like that. Had he came out, yeah, but he was just kind of giving me an inside knowledge. He was already getting it. It was just like, if you want to come to anime me, I'll, I'll, I'll take you along there. So it just, yes. it was a sign happy. As soon as I heard that, I just said to Murray, like, look, Annan, want me? And I'll, I'll go straight there. And that was me at the end of the season, mate. Just down with, with him and Joyce. Joyce again. How was that done for you about doing the Annan every week? But, well, to be fair, it was, it was training once uh, at Hamley Road on a Tuesday, wasn't it? And doing it, it was doing uh, that. on a Thursday. It, 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 no, at the start, no. Nah. At the start, it was. Oh, was it no? Oh, fuck. <laughs> I don't think it was until. I think Chappie wanted to get his feet under the table before he started changing. Aye, but the man's like that, uh, So I didn't even drive at that point, mate. So it was. <laughs> man, I was under the gaffer. Fucking. Oh. I mean, <laughs> Joyce would be ways I know, mate. So I was like, I know I'm a half. I'm not sitting with him. <laughs> It's not surprising me, man. That's Chappie's boy. <laughs> Chappie, I enjoy his boy. Do you feel like the poor teacher's pet? Like, seeing you put on the loser of the gaffer, like, all the new boys must have been like... Who's that? Oh, aye. Who's that boy with uh, this time doing with a gaffer and an assistant? Uh, he's like, I think I came in. I, I don't think Saturday, Saturday. I was quite glad. I remember the first game, I think he put me in a bench, but I think I just... Oh, right. like, then I was like... Thank God you didn't throw me in, man. That was <laughs> worse if he just throws me straight into the team at all without knowing. So um, it was good. Mate. I, like I think I needed that at that point because seeing you're young and you're not playing, you start, you know, it's uh, like man, you start, uh, games, you know that, and you start losing your head. So uh, I need good. to get and get games, mate. And you know, it was. I think the thing that sold me with Annan as well was I seen the Rangers at Ibrox in the calendar like a month after I was joining. So. That was a that was probably the, the reason aye. one of the main reasons as well why I said I'd definitely go for it. Aye. Aye. But like you say he's had he's had Vendor Ibrox that year and he's not beating them. What was that like? Brilliant, mate. Like aye. I can remember it was just one of those ones where uh, we just we booked a night out anyway, like all the boys falling <laughs> out, like who cares? And aye. just similar to like the very first time you played Ibrox, so you get those wee kind of buzzies, you don't it's no disrespect to Nice. Nice and stuff, but seeing you turn up to Ibrox and like you're in the change room and you, and you just Aye. think all the players that have been there and that, like, it's Aye. Your, whole, your whole feelings Aye. to the game are different. And even like walking out, mate, I mean, it was like 34,000 or something that was there. So it was like, Aye. just, so it's not like a major full house that you would normally expect, but you still couldn't even hear yourself. Like, I couldn't even imagine. Aye. Who, who played right. for them then? Who, who was the team? Was that Ian Black? Yeah. Oh. Jesus, aye. Black, Dean, Dean Shields played. Um, Pollock was up front. I, 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 Kevin Kale, that was one up. Was... Lee Wallace played that day as well. Kev Kale wasn't playing. You had. Oh, was no. Up front. Dean Sandaza. Up front. Sandaza came on, mate. It was. <laughs> <laughs> who were you barking? I had Mike McCulloch. So it was. He was up. AI. Uh, just like I think it was like part in the game where like 
I think the ball was up in the air or something, and I went up for the header, and like you know, he's like, mate, he just like throws his elbows in. I just, <laughs> and so he's throwing the elbow, mate, and it's like caught me, and I'm about to fall down, mate. So I was like, but I see he's coming down with me, so I've just like grabbed him and I've pulled him down with me. And he's like, as soon as he got up, mate, he just turned around, and I thought, mate, he's, I swear he'd like done that, as if like he was just about to give me a like, hit in the face. <laughs> and uh, he just kind of <laughs> fucked it in, and then he just ran away from me, and I thought, I, I, in my head, I was like, I wish you'd <laughs> So, uh, in your future, like, I think we were 2 2 2 1, I think, maybe, no, 2 0 or 2 1. I know I don't finish 2 1, but I think it was like, two, you know, at that point when he'd done that, so you're thinking, like, oh, if they get sending off, Aye. you know, better, man. No lie, like, see, when he went 2 1, mate, in my head, I'm thinking, I'll take a draw right now. So, like, <laughs> you're constantly, like, thinking, let's just get through this, get, like, you're Aye. just on that clock and you're winning. And like, uh, it was just what I feel when we finally got the final whistle. And, and we had obviously the night out, so you know, everybody. We just go that night. Uh, we go. We <laughs> feel <laughs> damage. Uh, I think it's like a, a flat up in town, like for the boys, because I lived in England with we, Anna at the time. So he'd raise like a big party flat. We'll end up just going out, mate. Like, I think it was Cushion, I oh. think, if I remember right. And Cushion? Boys just strolling in here at like four or five in the morning. But we were just like, I can't remember what happened in the next morning, but I do remember staying that morning and just like, all the boys are just, it's like hangover seeing me. Everyone's just hanging about. <laughs> all the chairs and whatever. Like, so I don't right. know. Just like, <laughs> like, definitely a cluster so just when you hanging about. It was Joyce like after that game, he must have been greeting her. He was like, do you know what Joyce is like, mate? He's never really like, he was happy, but he was never like, uh, was never, late, never elated, wasn't he? No? <laughs> never like, never got excited about anything, mate. So, like, nice. first time, like, you seen him come on the park, like, buzzing and like, game boys cuddles and that, because he was never, he was never, never like that. Uh, he, was, he was expected to win every game. I think it was just like it was just his personality. I think we all just accepted that. So he was like he didn't hold the kit and stuff. But I think obviously that game you could I think you just throw the negatives out the window no matter how bad like somebody uh, on the game. Uh, so he just uh, 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 So how did that Anne and team he's end up put then David Well it's cut a years then he's end up pushing for playoffs and that as well. He's uh, a good so, team. He's, he's like we rat he's like rat. Like Brian McStay signed as well, Rabbi yeah. Nomar as well, didn't he? He signed to, yeah, well, he, he's not going to Elgin now, but uh, he's a good team as well, didn't he? Yeah, I think, um, I mean, the very, very first season I went there, they won like relegation or anything, but I think they just kind of finished maybe seventh or sixth in that league. It was just kind of safe and type thing. So it was in the start, I think Gaffer started like looking towards bringing in his own players, players he knew and stuff. So I think that's when we seen like McStay. We Brannon came in, Chizzy, um, you know, both started to edge into the team and, and he got a really good team together, like, you know, Spoons as well. Uh, he's... But I he was a normal man. Like, just his intelligence and, like... Experience for that man. He's a striker, mate. Like, see, striking the ball, like... Aye. He's always hitting the target, even, like, with difficult te- like, technical things, like, you would think, like, oh, he's going to sky this and he would... Mm-hmm. Yeah, top back. Like, he, just, he, was, he was just different like to what I'd been used to. Like Prince was brilliant as well, technically, but we were wrong. But just to even like to see Spoon and like even his free kicks and stuff, it was brilliant. Um I already knew what McStay could bring and you know, I think Tony will agree like he's technically quite up there, but they played with Tony. Aye, unreal. McStay's unreal. I know what you mean with Peter uh, Spino as well. Spino's class for that level, mate, from where he went from there to there. Class. It just made things look easy and like, uh, it's just hard to explain, mate. There's no pace. Like, he couldn't, uh, absolutely, couldn't run away from him, but the, the influence he'd have on the full team was unbelievable. Great guy, as well. Great guy, man. Great guy. Aye. Uh, uh, but obviously, when I first put in, actually, like, he came in after, before that, when they made the playoffs, you had like, um, we Hoppy was there and we Ali Love let him play we Ali Love obviously now at, at Clyde mm-hmm. um, so you know we had quite the, you know, those young players and you know Hoppy's I got in very well with he was for Clyde Bank as well like myself so we would travel in 
Um, that be it. he didn't drive either at the time either, mate. So it was like me and him were a nightmare, man. But um, nah, mate, Annie was great. It was unlucky. I thought oh, right. that was a good shout, and we got to the playoffs that year. Um, oh. Really strong. Um, mm. Were you surprised when Chappie got the Clyde job then? Was I surprised, did you say? Or happy? Uh, or surprised? Surprised, surprised. Um, it was just weird the way it worked out. Like, mm-hmm. I, was, I went to Clyde, you know, you only had Fergie there. And right. then Fergie left and they got a couple of caretakers in. Oh, uh, so you went to Clyde first then, did you? Aye, I was at Clyde first, mate. Oh, all right, aye, okay. Sorry. So I ended up at oh. Clyde first and it wasn't until... So Fergie said you did? Hi mate, Fergie. Well, what was that like then? Fucking mate, Barry Ferguson signing you, man. You know what? It was strange. I think it was around, must be about January, February time before the season. Um, and when I had this call, I don't answer random numbers and that. So I never. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just that way, you just message back, you make an excuse up. So I just said something like, "Sorry, I missed your call. Who's this type thing?" And he's just wrote, "It's Barry Ferguson. Call me back." <laughs> You know, like, straight away you're thinking, bam, like, <laughs> especially like, junior gay guys like Spoon and McStay, the team, you always think there's a stitch up somewhere along the line, man. So I'm still sure <laughs> both in here. Um, and I was quite, I was, I was very good, I'm still am, but Big Kev, Nickel, um, right. I was actually there at the time that I got a text, and Kev had played with his bra, Derek, at Stunra. Right. Like, look, give them a phone and put them in loudspeaker and see if it's Barry. I'll be able to tell you right away if it's Barry or not with the boys. <laughs> so, like, to me, mate. so I've just put it on loudspeaker. I'm, I'm expecting somebody to put on a voice here. And like, for the very first seconds, Kev's just looked at me like, hey, it's him. Like, just like, straight away, man. And like, see, because I wasn't expecting it. So I was, he, he hadn't said what it was about. Obviously, in your head, you're starting to think like, maybe it's like, maybe asking to see if I was interested in going to them, but Aye. Just like kind of hits you, like, that's a boy, like a, a die hard Rangers fan growing up. And aye, stuff. aye. She's she at the end of your telephone, like asking how young stuff. It was just weird, mate. <laughs> 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 uh, aye, it was very good. They me. Um, so we phoned me first and we had a, a long chat about kind of what you know he was interested in, what he was looking for, and stuff. So we, we went from there to eventually, I think we met up. After that, so it was quite professional. So, so they pay money for you? Was it in, in the contract? Was it after Aaron? In the contract, and I was, was five at the time. So, so it was over the, I think, if, usually if you're under 23, that's, you know, teams would be. Aye. But with Aye. you could just go. Aye. So, how, how busy is a, is a gaffer, as a coach? Was he, was he a money bastard as much people make it, or is he? Men an actual coach and people say I just had standards mate like I, I've got uh, in terms of training like I, I spoke about Jacko's training and stuff earlier in class like Fergie's training was right up there as well man like was that eh? you know, and he understood the players as well like see if we had like a couple of really tough games like and you could see we put a lot into them like you'd come in the next day next training session and it would do like, massages and a light cool down do you know what I mean he wouldn't well, some managers that sometimes would just bring you in, it would be a normal session again, and you can tell mm-hmm. it's the down. But he had a full understanding of things like that, and obviously, just, uh-huh. just so he knew. But no, mm-hmm. his coaching was unbelievable. Um, and yeah, he, he just had standards, that's what I would say. Yeah. Like, I don't see anything wrong with that. If, if he thinks a player's better than what they're showing, he, he, he would tell them straight. Um, uh-huh. How it didn't work out it was, you know, I think maybe some players that, that you know took it harder than others. Maybe it's, they struggled with that, um, you know, type of to put on them. But yeah, that, do you go like, anymore? Right, I, I find me like um, just trying to think of like any sort of examples. It was just I'm quite like see when I join a team like I, I'm just you know I'll go in and I'll do my work and stuff like. So I think you appreciate like what I was doing. Like I wouldn't I don't take this or that. Uh, it seems like a kind of guy, if you're honest, big player like yourself, that you're just going to do a bit of shift for the team, they'll accept you. That's the kind of guy who comes across as enemy. If you've got to go and bullshit him, like you say, no, he'll, 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 he'll call you out, man. Do you know what I mean? So, it was good to have chats with as well. Like, uh, he was always important. So, like, anything personal, anything that's happening outside of football, um, 
that you want to have a chat about. Like, you just want to know everything. Um, and like, yeah, overall, me, I had a good time. I was just sad that, you know, it didn't last as long as, as what it did. Um, obviously, we just went a bad, a bad run of form and it, it just, we just weren't recovering from it. Like, I think we were, you know, we're maybe getting a win for somewhere, but then after it, we were losing a couple and it just... Right. Yeah, like it's, it's, I don't think it was in all it was just maybe his time to just say, um, I think he just decided it was time for him to go. It was like, I can always remember it was like an Annie and a way trip I think we had, and they, I don't think we lost the game, I think we might have drawn, but it was just around that time. It was like, look, um, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's time for me, I think, and they, they just went, man. So it was, did he say that to the changing room, did he? Did he say that to the boys? Um, so he, he didn't really say it as many words in the changing room, but he, he did say it, like, no. He was just maybe hitting it in the change room that day. He was just saying maybe it's me. Like he was kind of starting to question right. himself at that point. Boys and not I think any boys, like, like I say, like he's training his class and it's just the standards they say. Like I don't think it was right. anything to do with him. It was just hard. It was just a hard season for the boys. Right. Um so yeah, it was sad to see him go again. Right. Surviving right. Pizzo and JP obviously took over towards the end. Um for all well, it was Pizzo like as a, as a coach? He was just fine. Like, same uh, again. I think he was similar to what Fergie was just wanting to train enjoyable. Uh, like, uh, and that's what he's one of the boys Pizzo on it. Yeah, exactly, mate. So I think he noticed, you know, we're doing bad in the league. So he was just more wanting boys to come in and enjoy it again because we we're all down. You know, we're all hard for Yeah, I'm sure, like, we were second bottom or close to bottom. I think we could have got relegated if we hadn't won the last game, mate. It was that bad. Fuck's sake. And, so I think he was just wanting to bring us in and make sure we, you know, just enjoy it again. And I mean, I think he, his kind of philosophy was, you know what I mean, if you're enjoying it, you probably will be a chance of playing better on a Saturday. So it was just more getting the confidence back in the boys. And to yeah. be fair, I agree, that's exactly what they've done, you know. Uh, good. Fair enough. Right, Tony, back to yourself, mate. So what you say is you end up with Queen's Park. Was that a loan move then, was it, or did you? Aye, mate. So obviously Kenny Shields came in. Aye. Uh, I struggled for a wee bit and then went on to Queen's Park with Gus McPherson. Um, played for, I think it might have only been a month at this time. Uh, went there for a month, came back, uh, played one game at Morton and then got shipped out again. Um, but that, that it sums up my time at Morton with Kenny Shields and that, mate. Like, I, I, I never played, never really expected anything of me. So I was like, look, can I go on loan? Yeah, fine. Went on loan. Came back and I remember it was like we were playing cowed and beef and it was between us and cowed and beef. Uh, like basically, Morton had to beat cowed and beef, who were obviously part time. We had to beat them if we wanted to stay up. Um, so I'd obviously been away, not really featured, been training with them, playing with Queen's Park. So I went away to Gus McPherson. I was like, that to him, look, can I come back to end the season? He went, well, just just go and see what happens with Morton. I was like, yeah, well, I'm not going to play, blah, blah, blah. So Travelling to Cowden Beef, doing the team talk and all that, and I'm just sitting thinking, bear me, I've not even played, I just came back, switches the team over and I'm playing, and I'm like, the fuck <laughs> we're here? So I'm playing with like, Barry Mackay, Rowan Vine and all that, and I'm thinking, fuck sake, right, okay. Again, time to switch on, hopefully I can go and play the rest of the season and blah, blah, blah. Win here, thinking, right, get a chance to win, kick his on a wee bit, picked up a wee bit. Rowan Vine, I think it was now, now at half time, mate, you know what Cowden Beef Pitch is like terrible, mate. Shocking, right? Aye. Foggy. Can't even see the fans that far away. Rowan Vine does that. Bang. Does that. Signs to them. Get up there. Sent off, mate. So we're down to 10 men. I think that was at half time. I think they beat us 3 0, mate. 3 0. Played that one game. And I'm thinking, oh, so here we go. Next week, Cowden Beef. You know, Queen of South on the bench. Put a young boy on before me. I think it was Nelson. No, 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 she puts a young boy on. So I said to him, look, if, if, if you're going to. If, because obviously Kelly, he, he won a cup at Kelly and that, man. I think he kind of brought young boys through. So right. I was like, I can go and play at Queen's Park now under Gus McPherson, who, who I actually loved, mate. And it's similar to Barry Ferguson, we hear stories about Gus and I suppose a bit of an utter, but I loved him. Um, him and Hilly, actually, who was a coach, it was before it, Dumbarton years ago. But I went and I was like, look, if you're going to play, if, you're, if you've got a chance to play young boys and you're just kind of looking for that to progress them for the next year or whatever, I'll go on loan. And he just said, oh, I don't know, you need to speak to, and it was like, the secretary or receptionist, and I was like, why would what? the receptionist decide if I can go on loan? So I spoke <laughs> to Gus McPherson, and he went, go and make sure it's okay, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so I went, right, okay, so I spoke to Ken Shields, and he went, 
oh, let me leave it with me. I'll speak to the receptionist to sort it. And I was like, no, oh, fuck this. So I just went, yeah, Gus, it's all right. Just go and get it sorted. So he just emailed him and then got it sorted to go back, mate. But like, go, like, right. like what I'm saying when I went and played that one game, Gus McPherson knew I was going to play that game at Cowbeef, he said. I went back and he went, oh, I knew we were going to play, but because he'd spoke to him and says, how's Tony been doing? Like, has he played enough? Is he ready to be thrown in? And he was like, look, obviously he's just here for a month. Definitely ready to start, but you'll maybe get a good 60, 70 minutes out of him, right? And I was like, fair enough. And I played 90 minutes that night against County Beef as well. And I'm just like, I me, mean, that sums up. Josh McPherson's told oh, him, man. I've only played four games. You'll maybe not get that. And again, yeah. So went back to the Queen's Park to see what she's made and really enjoyed it, to be fair, just getting back. But yeah, that's what did you like about Gus? What was it about Gus you liked about him, mate? Just how he was, mate, as a, uh, as a guy, as his coach. As a man manager, was he? Yeah, good, mate. Like, would speak to boys, or at least he spoke Talk to me, would take you in his office and that pull you, speak to you about things. And I remember, I remember one time he said to me, he took me in and he used to say, like, some of your runs from midfielder are, are, are some of the best I've seen, or something like that. Like, he's timing the runs in, in the box from midfielder, or up there with some boys I've seen at St. Merlin and stuff. And I was like, fucking hell, man, this, this is class. I'm hearing this with Gus McPherson, right. who is a big manager in Scottish football. Aye. Um, and we had a young boy, Blair Spittle, who's at Thistle, I think he's at Thistle, right. Ross County. First can I know it, oh, Blair, I. Is it Ross County now? But anyway, he, he was flying at the time, and a lot, a lot of clubs were coming to look at him. I think Queen's Park were second or bottom, bottom and, but he was doing well, and loads of teams were looking at him, and I remember Gus McPherson saying, look, there's no international weekend, I don't know what it was, he was like, there's no teams playing tonight, I can guarantee you there's going to be numerous people coming to look at Blair Spittle, so make sure they leave thinking about Tony Wallace. That's the kind of stuff he would say to me, and I was like, Thank fair enough, man. I was like, this is class, because... Again, mate, coming on loan in that, he could have just been like, yeah, just whatever, not really balling, but I, 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 I enjoyed him, mate. I can see why people think he's he's nuts, because, again, mate, it's standards, isn't it? It's standards, you want to win. He wants to win as a manager, Aye. regardless. He wants people to be training, playing well, doing everything well, mate, so he's not going to stand for a take this, I'm not trying. Yeah, so I, I, I really enjoyed it there, mate. Mm. So, so the, only, the only downside... Was Hamden was getting done for the Commonwealth the Olympics or something? Uh, I was about to ask you how was Hamden back then, Bill. Fuck, I was going to say it was. Um, I'm going to ask any player who plays at Queen's Park. Like, there must be a novelty the week we're off playing in Hamden every week. But what was it like playing Hamden every week? But uh, I was about to say Commonwealth players getting done up. So it must be less than Hamden, innit? Wasn't wasn't was it lesser? I don't even know if it was lesser. Maybe no, trained Tory Glenn. Was it an Oyakis game just had? Erdries. Was it Airdrie, was it? Aye, fuck. Sign thinking, thinking, here we go, Hamden, this will do. Aye. Trained at Tory Glen, played at Airdrie ground, and I'm like, everyone said to me, <laughs> everyone's like, me, how's it playing at Hamden, even though it's empty? And I'm like, well, I don't know, because I've not played there yet. So, <laughs> it's a nightmare, nightmare, mate. But Brutal, I played mate. there now, so it's all right, it's decent, it is good, mate. It is good. Brutal. There you go, then. Um, so I was got time going, was it, what was it first? Was it Nern or was it BSC first you went to? BSC mate. So I went actually went up to Nern on trial um yeah. that, that same year. Um and then I ah. the traveling that mate, I just I just never signed to the BSC stuff. Um but I never had to train me, I just traveled up on Saturday and to be fair, mate, as nowadays I think the Highland League, especially in the Lone League, are getting a lot more publicity now because of the standards. Aye. Even then, Aye. mate, there's a lot of money, mate, in the this like the training kit. I was getting under armors getting so much food before and after games mm-hmm. and properly preparing. It was all the best of stuff, mate, and they do look after you um, mm-hmm. and the stadiums and stuff. So I can see why they're travelling. But again, I, I just trained here. I trained with Big Hardy. He was in at Yoker. I trained with Yoker every now and again. I went up with Oh, did Saturday. you, right? Travelled in with Carl Antel, who uh-huh. I met at Perth. And he used to drive. He 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 hated like being a passenger, so he used to drive all the time, mate. So I'd get to Perth and not have to worry about driving, mate. So it was perfect. <laughs> I went to DSC, but I went to DSC first, mate. And uh, uh, who was a gaffer then? Was it? Would have been Stephen Swift then, would it? No, Stephen no, Swift's a gaffer now. No, it was John Brogan at uh, first. John Brogan. John Brogan and that who'd obviously been a bit the juniors. That was him for about a couple of months. I don't even know how long. And then Ian King, uh, King, he Ian came King. in with like Ali Graham and Giggsy and that, and they came in and again it just changed from being that to pure professional but I say we'd all went and it was like Grant Moss and that was a lot of young boys and John Brogan in and we loved it because this was the first year BSC that we'd been together we won a mm-hmm. cup done all right, all right in the league the training was like an hour and up the road it was like boxes possession games volleys and that was it it was class it was, it, I say it was class right it's not what you need 
if you're wanting to develop and play and all that. But see, if you're just going and play, uh, mate, unreal. And then once Kingy and that came in, it was a lot more tactical and proper professional and that. So it was decent, but... How was the standard? That to the players you're playing now? Decent, mate. Again, it was all young, young, young boys, mate. So boys that had been maybe full-time before and then kind of went away to juniors. Other boys that uh-huh. had been junior never really had the chance, but they were capable of playing. So... It was decent, mate. It was good. I'm trying to think like there's a, there's a big guy, Bronski, who's now at Elgin. He's now for Elgin, but at Annie. So, boys have still went on to full-time, uh, full-time to senior leagues and that, mate. And as I say, nowadays, that there's loads of players that are dropping down to lower league, mate, just because, obviously, money, chance to play, Aye. part-time jobs. Aye. The only, the only downside then was we played at Mary Hill, mate, so you know about the pitch. was oh. wasn't great. Terrible pitch, mate. Um, what nightmare. bum, mate? Bogging, mate. absolutely so, bogging. We've got Alan, who's not much better enough, but it's a better setup, I suppose. But at least it's the, the Aspen, and all that, a nice big pitch, and obviously, kind of perfect. So it's not too bad, mate. But I went there, and then the following Aye. year, I went to Nern. So, Aye. how's you going at Nern? Good, mate. Aye. Again, I started off, I started off really well, mate. I enjoyed it. I remember playing against like uh, Ross County in my mess in pre season, scored against Ross County, Decent. and I thought, oh, here we go. Decent. But I partly tore my ACL, mate. So, Aye. I was out for a month, felt it was all right, came back, didn't give way, but it was just like when you go to change the direction, sometimes you're like a wee twinge, so I was like, oh, mm-hmm. what is that? So put, and then they said to me, build it up, build it up, build it up, you're not need an operation, so I was just building it up, played. I think, to be fair, that year, I think I scored nine, nine for now, um, and we got to two cup finals, mate, albeit we lost two, to be fair, but we got to two cup finals, mate, and had a decent team. Um, no. And as I say, you were well looked after. They'd pay for hotels and that up there to, to stay in for games and stuff if we needed it. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of good teams up there, Tony, aren't there? A lot of good teams up the Island League. Well, I think the first game, I think, was it Fort Martin? Or there, was, there was a team we played, like Ian Bigers was playing there, just behind he'd left mm-hmm. Motherwell or something, who played there. Mm-hmm. Unreal, mate. He's, he's played a great now for Ross County, I think it is, or whatever. So Aye. players mm-hmm. like that, mate, they would generally just leave Ross County mm-hmm. or Inverness to go to the high league because for them to aye. travel central, it's not worth it, mate, because they get the same money exactly. in high league. So, exactly. Aye. So mm-hmm. it's not worth it, mate, but it was good. Um, what, I, what I was thinking, though, see when was talking about who was he marking? Uh, <laughs> what I was thinking, right? Guess who I was marking in the Celtic game? I don't think you ever guessed this, and it wasn't Van Dyke. Ambrose? No. McNiff, who do you think? Who are you playing? Celtic, 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 Celtic. So, you up front that game, though? No, nah, no, nah. I was at wide, but no, nah, for corners, mate, for corners. Oh, I can't think who would have played with you, would have, I can't even tell, mate. So, really? Like... Mate, this, so everyone, obviously, I'm, I'm quite a big guy as well, but they all picked up absolute units like Van Dyke and that. Timo Pukki, mate, Timo Pukki. <laughs> <laughs> the, guy, the, the guy's absolute flying, he's absolute flying for Norwich, and I'm stuck in, I'm stuck in the room. In lockdown, unreal. Timo Pukki, I'm marking him a couple of years ago for corners, and now I'm stuck in the room doing a lockdown there now, and he's he's flying for Norwich in the Premier League. Unreal. Oh, was he like that night? Was he push? That's no bother, mate. Let's see. When I was marking him, I'm thinking, oh, he just just stood there. I was like, what a guy to mark by. They did not move at corners. I was like, what a guy. <laughs> unreal, mate. But, oh, so after that, made up East Fife. Was that was that right? East Fife, mate. So. Again, Gary Naismith, I went there with a good mate of mine, Kyle Wilkie, and went in there to start right. training with East Fife. Um, similar to what Neff says, obviously, with the Barry Ferguson thing, when he signed it, I went in and trained a couple of times, and Gary Naismith offered me a deal, and I'm thinking, I mean, I remember the boys flying about the chart, there's a picture of him, like, slide tackling Cristiano Ronaldo and stuff, mate, and he's uh, playing forever, so uh, I'm like that to myself. If Gary Naismith signing you without seeing you play a game, you're just training, you, you must be doing all right, mate. Um, <laughs> So again, started off, you know what it's like, you, you always play, you more or less play the kind of team you expect to kind of start in pre-season. I right. played Aberdeen and I was, I was starting, so I was like, right, okay, the next week's the Death Red Cup. So I was like, right, okay, this is going to be good. And obviously, as I said, with my knee at Nern, they said, build up, no, not worry. And then I just twisted it, mate, I went to change direction and uh, it kind of ballooned up. So I basically missed the first four Death Red Cup games, mate, and then... Mother. It went away and it came back, but eventually that season at East Fife, uh, it, it fully told me ACL. So I kind of think from the Nairn thing, it was just 
small tears were constantly happening and it was just about to go at some point so it was just a wee bit disappointing because Barry Smith had came in we had a right good team to be fair we, we Scotty Robinson's at Livy now flying um, Aye. Barry Smith came in I always remember it was like a game against Breakin on BBC Alba mate this is, this is how, that's how good the standards were on BBC Alba again uh, <laughs> beat, beat Breakin mate played next week against Peterhead beat them with a the young boy Kev O'Hara um, in on loan for Falkirk at the time Beat Peter Head, went up for a header, and he just went two games into it. Barry Smith and I think Gordon Young were in. Uh, and obviously, Gary Naismith got a move from East Fife to Queen of the South. So I was thinking, right, okay, we're only get a run of, run of games here. But Barry Smith and that knee goes, and then that was it. I had to go and get a scan, feel it up, should start my season done, mate. So nightmare. But I, I really enjoyed the East Fife. That was, that was probably uh-huh. the time where from them, Barton to Morton stuff that I kind of thought. I'm a choose a player. I'm like, I kind of Aye. ready to go. And but established. Play every week. Aye, play, play every week. Aye. Um, you show what I can do, and then obviously that happens. So it's just like, see, here we go. Because I'd never had any injuries at all up to then, mate. Nothing serious. No even mind. Like, not really niggles, mate. Um, and then that happens, that's and you're like, people like that. Oh, you injured, and you're like, so you one serious thing out for months, and then that's what happens, mate. So bit of a nightmare. The, so how long are you? At? Nine months, did you say there? How long are you at for? <laughs> Six minutes, so it's near the end of the season. So I went in, and to be fair, to you, there was a physio there, George Good, Geo, who was class because a week later, Kyle Wilkie had done his knee. So Aye. two of us both done an 80s Fife. And obviously, Geo's from, I think the time is from Edinburgh Fife. He was just to travel through to Glasgow and see me and Kyle and treat, give his treatment after our operations, um, which obviously didn't need to do, he wasn't getting paid for from his Fife. So I think that helped massively with coming back. but as I say, mate, because I felt established and I felt like I was training well, playing well, I kind of rushed back. So, when it got to the six-month stage, I pushed it and I played a trial game. Oh, I went into training with Stranraer thinking, that's me ready. They struggled. They had boys out injured and he was like, oh, can you go on the bench? And I was like, and as you say, Hamden, this was my first game at Hamden. And he's like, oh, can you come on the bench? I was like, yeah, that's fine. I was like, six months anyway, I'm fine. I'm, I'm not going to be playing much anyway. Now, no, at half time, he says, Oh, have you got 45 in you? And I was like, Oh, fuck you, go. I was like, I have to <laughs> So, obviously, I didn't like first game back in the world you're going to play. I remember we argued, that was in the stand. I think he was injured. That's why I was like, you know, playing as a trialist. Mm-hmm. Chasing someone back, went over, and like his studs had caught my knee. Oh, and obviously, fuck. my knee, my scar, my scar's not properly healed. So, it like cut open. And obviously, just because it was right on the scar, it's like pure sense. It makes so I was limping about and agony. That thought he, he said, He's like, I thought you'd done your knee. And I was like, Nah, just I just cut it open, mate. And then I went over it. So, kind of, I, I rushed back, mate. I, had, I went to East Cobride after that. And every night, mate, I was in it. A physio, and he had to like, your, your knee needs to be a certain degree. like straight once you're back from an operation to get it fully locked out. And mine, mine's wasn't, mate. And every night before training, you would have to straighten out. And it just was not good, mate. I had a shock, shocker at East Coast just because my knee wasn't right. I rushed back. I felt like, I felt like, I should have had a right good go at East Fife. Had to drop mm-hmm. down, and then eventually I thought to myself, right, East Coast going to win the league. Billy Starks the manager now. I go there, do well. He can vouch for me again. Billy Starks well known in Scottish football. I was like, right. he can get me back up the league so I go and do well. And just my knee, mate, just fucking was not right. So I had to just, after that, mate, because the loan league obviously finished early, I had to just mm-hmm. take about three months out, mate, just to do absolutely everything for my knee. I wasn't mm-hmm. doing any running. I was just building up and all that, mate, just to try and get back to where I had been because I was like, I cannot have that happen again where you're out for a month or back and then it keeps going, mate. So I had to just fucking properly get mm-hmm. it sorted before I came back into it. Aye, so back to yourself, Martin. So Joyce, Joyce, Chappie came back, came into Clyde. Didn't even work it too well for him either. Eh? Chucked it, right, man. Hello. You paying your bill? You no paying your bill? Big man's no paying his Wi-Fi bill. Are they working all right now? I, I think so. Do they hear me? Yeah. Aye. Sorry, you hear me Can you hear me now? I'm saying Joyce and Chappie come out of Clyde. Uh, did they work out too well for him, didn't it? No. Nah, mate. Um, which is a shame. Yeah. So, like, I wanted them to come in and do so well. And mm-hmm. um, they came and 
like it started well they were bringing in you know younger players I think they're just trying to go down a different direction first came in mm-hmm. um, you know unfortunately those boys that are going quite well, well like boys like Higgy and stuff like that that were mm-hmm. going the same with Piso so you know, there was a lot of experienced boys that I got well with that you know weren't getting going, but I think that was more more financial as well. I think they had to cut back and, and you know go down a different route. So it was it was bringing a few boys that he knew for Annan, um, a mm-hmm. boy Ramsey and, and um, like Matty Fun as well was there, didn't he? Matty, uh, he was already there with me, mate. He came. He oh, was he? Um, so Matty was already there. Um, Rabin, I, I think he was trying to get rid of Rabin Omar in, but I don't think he, he, he that one done. So I think it was a compensation thing that was was kind of holding back. But it, it got a good like base of players. Maybe Barry Cuddy is still there now. So well, I keep well. I made a good player. So it, it started. I mean, start, I think it was even the Betfred Cups. We did look, you know, as if we had something. Is it was that? Quite promising, like we were starting quite well in the games. Even Kilmarnock, we went there and made a, a right good account of ourselves. I think we were doing well up until mm-hmm. think, 20, 30 minutes, which full time you're always expecting that, that especially pre we were still, we weren't at that level, yet, but we were expected to be good for 90 minutes. So just to compete with them well for maybe 50, 60 minutes, I think we were quite happy. We could go into the season mm-hmm. quite strong. Um, just, uh, <laughs> It's just strange how it just blew up. Like it just uh, didn't ever happen for them at all. Like, I can't I've heard different from... things. How about two visitors? I mean, obviously, I think it was quite probably like you know the, the last game they played as well. Like things that had been going on with mm-hmm. them and the fans. I think I think that was like the final mm-hmm. straw. Um, uh, I mean, I don't think it was just one of those things. Maybe we had a right good team there. It just mm-hmm. didn't. And you know, Danny came in and we got better. And you know, there's nothing to say that if Chappie in that stage when they're going to get those same results, like mm-hmm. just the games, like it was just lucky the games. I think like we had a couple of really bad games, and then let's play the last game and all that happened to the fans. I don't think Kelty as well. Um, and I see Tony laughing. <laughs> I'm just looking at I'm looking at your face now, and because I can only see like your jumper blending down with the chairs, just like me floating. Good. <laughs> Obviously, one in the day, well, especially you know him and Joyce say, but no, it was funny. Hey, chap, he's American, new or something like that. I I seen him not long after it. Um, it was happy, like, we put there, it was a Charity game or something, so I went down there and Chappie was playing, mate. Is he fucking? I ended up seeing him after I went to the bar and like Did had, get Charlie were there, so it was good to like, kind of have a chat with him for a little bit. Uh, Joyce, you know, doing something still. I remember. Um, I think he's still at Rangers, isn't he? I think he's just in Dane community stuff. Rangers, I'm not sure, I could be ragging here, but it's what I've heard. Um, I, don't know, I met him about a year ago, I was at uni. We done stuff at uni up at um, Everett's I think he's does that like, still his coaching stuff like, I don't think he's involved in any clubs or that now, but nah, um, just, Joyce should be uh, Joyce should be back in football mate I nah. brilliant brilliant coach like as much as he was hard on players and that he, he coached players mate he'd tell people told nah. boys how to develop do you know what I mean um, I what you say that. Matt we were that... very done I think we loved that right but uh, Today's world, like I'm not saying he wouldn't oh. get away. I think there'd be a lot of oh. people to comment more on what the hang of the hangs are doing. Aye, yeah. get away with it. Aye, no, I tell you what, I remember this at under 19s, right? Joyce's manager, <laughs> I think it might have been you, McNiff. It might have been me, you, and Daly in a group, right? You're shooting, and someone's crossed in, bang, volley. I think it was a, a, a squad of volley, and I'm, we're all celebrating that. Like, Here we go, Joyce, <laughs> Joyce is giving it. Do it again, then I'm like, I'll do it again. He's like, right, if you don't do it again, you're going to I remember that, sorry. Bang. I remember volley, the same volley. The keeper saved it, and I'm like, no way. I had to run around the pitch in the rain <laughs> in my boxers. And three times around the pitch, I'm doing laps. The under-17s and all you know, the pelts are staying at the side, and I'm running around my boxers. Oh, you wouldn't allow me to do that nowadays, man. The kids are going after that. The pelts wouldn't the pelts, allow it. Oh, what a buzz, man. Oh, you wouldn't be allowed that off. nowadays. The probably, man. Brilliant, man. Oh, but um, I so Danny comes in to Clyde, mate. 
brings in Murray as well, Chris Fire, the goalie coach and stuff like that as well. How'd you get with the boys, all right? Aye, mate. Um, well, Fire has actually recently left, man. Like, Aye, you've seen that, mate. Aye, you've uh, seen that, mate. Eh? No, it was just obviously Danny in that, uh, obviously in that going, and Danny and, and Murray came in. I didn't look across them in football. Obviously, we all knew about what Danny had done at St. Mum. Um, I knew Murray from the time he took Tony. Obviously, we've like kind of kept track of Tony's career when he left for more. And if you care, keep eye on it. I knew he was a the manager there, and he'd done quite well management wise as well. So, mm-hmm. I, and I thought it was quite a decent management team they'd got in. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, like I say, it's pretty proof to be that. Like, they've obviously things around, I think, when they first came in were, were doing very poor. And they, they kind of just stopped the rot from happening the first season. Um, mm-hmm. A couple of players in January, like we, um, McStay and, and Grant, like the, the sons of Peter Grant and McStay. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Two, two great Hopeless. players. Even when they first came in, like, they helped. <laughs> Hopeless. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you my joke. See when they came in, like, uh, st- we were still playing well, but I think they helped even lift a, a standard a bit as well because you know, nah, nah, they're, they're you know good. Grant, they grant his ball and he nah. gave us something that we never had in midfield before. Um, and, and just having that player, I think that helped Danny kind of get his philosophy across as well. I think he was wanting yeah. to mm-hmm. football, he just never had that link for the defence the midfield. So there's a lot of times where you know the defence and the goalkeeper just having to play it long and, and he was liking it so he, he was able to bring in a player at last that could, could link it all together and, and take the ball off the defence and it just makes a difference I think like you see in this following season when we come so close to winning the league and we, we, um, it, it definitely helped um, mm-hmm. a boy like Goody as well I think he's you know he's privileged to have you know somebody that, of that calibre at that level it's, it's about to ask me I boys like Good day, Annie Mangan. How good are they in training? That? He ranks as well, mate. Like, like I said to you about his, his management style, and that, that's what he's going into the now. I, I, I thought I'd believe he'll, he'll be up there like, in terms of oh, yeah. he's, he's got that kind of jacko mold into him, like where he, everything's all organised and even the wee minor details. Like, it's, it's always been things that I notice, like managers when they pick up, like jacko is exactly like wee things that nobody else would think of and they were picking up on. And you actually mm-hmm. think at the end of the game like, that actually made a massive difference. I'm telling you that. Like even the, the ranks was similar where it does wee things like that and mm-hmm. a really good career and even like playing for us. A few goals mm-hmm. out here and I think ranks set up quite a few of them. Um delivery and his quality of the ball. And I think good David even tell you as well, like he was scoring a lot of goals through his like with through his play. So he he was an important signing for us that year. Um, and you know, as was good when I first went, you know, my very first season there, he obviously kept the team in the league where he's, 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 he's hand of God moment, everybody talks about. <laughs> <laughs> but his goal scoring record, you know, uh, for somebody like that, it's, it's unreal. Uh, it's got to say, you see what all the best players have played with? Good day. Good day. Aye, uh, still like me. It's just, uh, even he's just, he's just class to have her in the team as well. Like, Captain, isn't he? Aye, aye. So he's, he's he first came in. He was quite quiet. Like he never, never really spoke. Obviously, he never knew much of the boys. But you know, over the last couple of years, you, you know, I've got on right, right close with him. And you know, I think me and him are like the two longest servers now that's been there. You know, Baz is probably next. So you know, I do get on really well with him. We do chat regularly about you know the team. And you know, with him being captain, you can just see that we extra bit. Of, he's trying to get responsibility and he's talking to the younger boys and giving them advice and he's, he's great for the young boys actually I couldn't even really, uh, like if I'm young he's more, he's more a kind of modern captain I think you know a lot of older captains would, would shout at them and get on to them whereas he's more he might have a wee go but then he'll, he'll go over and he'll actually explain properly what, what he's trying to address what he's trying to the message he's trying to give them so I think nice. he's captain as well and he's taking it on you need to, I think you need to you need to play with Goody as well to realise how good he is or, or yeah. be a centre and half up against him but I think see when we played uh, Aaron obviously we used to always play we used to always be close games against Clyde and it was always like one or one goal in it and I used to always think to myself fucking hell it's one striker against the four he's at the back he's up there he's cell come on and then when I signed and I played against him and I see how strong and good he is I was like fair enough and then I see him <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, he's, 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 he
Aye, I've heard that. He's, <laughs> he's deceivingly quick. He's strong. Aye. It's like, wow, man, he's, just, he's clever, mate. He is. He's, he's up there, man. You can see cool. why he's been uh, at that level. He's been at Norway. I remember when I was at Clyde, there was a picture going about a scoring against Spain, against <laughs> Victor Valdez, mate, up against Ramos. And I was just thinking, how many the same team as this guy? I <laughs> so we'll come to that season, the last uh, year before, Tony, you were at Aaron, uh, Martin obviously at Clyde. Um, you must have played against each other a few times that season, eh? Was that, was yeah. that, who, who won the league that year? Was that, who won the league that year? Yeah, Peterhead. Peterhead, yeah. Peterhead, you know, So you know, obviously it was quite a tight season, you ended up playing against each other in the playoff final. How was that? Rubbish. Tony will, Tony, will, Tony will start with you because Martin told me not to mention it, I think. So. <laughs> mate, the thing is, <laughs> it was all close, mate. It was all close games against them. And as I say, I should never have been taken <laughs> off in that final game. <laughs> but it was definitely not a penalty. I'll put it that way. It was 100% not a penalty. They, they got to bring it back into all square for the game. But, <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying in the matter. But nah, played against each other quite a few times anyway uh, that Aye. season. As I say, they were all close. I think I scored three goals against Clyde uh, the full <laughs> season before the playoffs. Um, so it was decent, but I think they'd always... Uh, I think they scored twice. I think they scored at like, last-minute winners or, or quite late winners. Um, so that was a nightmare. But yeah, they, they probably feel like they should have won the league, but they got deducted points and then kind of chucked it. So it, it, it was hard, mate, but... That's one thing. How, how did you go in that season yourself, Tony Aaron? Because you're obviously nah. get back into regular playing regular and stuff like that. How did you go in that season? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Mate. That's probably the best season I've had. Um, well, is I four, scored 14 goals, mate. So that was the best season I've had. Uh, 14 goals from midfield. Peter Murphy seemed to like me, mate. It was it was genuinely right. letting me have a laugh and like I just say I work hard away from football, mate, and away from training. But I'm travelling. 90 minutes to get to Aaron. So if I'm going to go there, if I'm going to travel 90 minutes there and back, I'm not going to go and just not speak and not enjoy myself. Right. So I like to have a laugh and make the most of travelling down and being there. So, but he, he was fine with that. Mate. He got involved. He still trained. He enjoyed that side of it. Um, and like what Mark was saying about Barry Fields, he was professional, mate. So like, because the boys had from Carlisle, if they were playing Elgin on a Saturday, it's not as bad for us it's still a couple of hours but from Carlisle to Elgin he would give you the Tuesday off and stuff like that it was kind of yeah. Matt will tell you it's a, it's a good club and a brilliant club um, yeah. Peter Murphy played at Wembley mate played for his country so for me that was my best season um, really enjoyed it probably after that year that, that's the thing each away is just missing out on promotion for the club because obviously you see how much it means to people there like Pete Watson and that been there for years mm-hmm. much it means to the club that's kind of something that you Eats away. Um, is Stephen Singles, Steve Wilspingles first? Is that his name? Is he still there? Swiss, 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 it's just part of yeah. the way it was. It's just bonkers, mate. I don't know. I know people have like rituals they need to do stuff and that, but not being sick, uh, like fine right up to before kick off in the set is weird, uh, mate. I know, weird. It. I know. It's weird, but it still mate, does it. Aye. Mate, Neff, how'd you find that season, mate? And then lean up to the playoff final. How has it gone for you? How was it for you, mate? Uh, it was tough, like. How has it the... happened with the point? Sorry. Yeah, that's. Yeah, it, it was just weird how it all worked out, mate. We just. We were flying. I think we were, we were games in hand, if I remember right. So if we'd won our games in hand, we were either going, I think it was within a point or two of them, or either going above them, whatever way it was working out. So we were flying, we were doing well, winning all our games, and then we had Elgin away. And I just remember in the morning, I think we were meeting, it's always a daft time when you go there, it's like half eight. Or okay. So I'm, I remember getting a text to say it came in slightly earlier, or, or something like that, and earlier than normal. And like, well, that's a bit strange. Maybe he's having like normally it's maybe breakfast or something. So that's what all the boys kind of initially thought. And when they turned up, um, we were just kind of told to stay in the changing room. And by that point, everybody's kind of knowing something's something's up. Um, yeah, and that's when the, the chairman and the manager came in. I think it was mostly the chairman that was, was talking about it. 
Um, just kind of saying, like, we've played a player, he's not been registered in time. And I think he was trying to take the brunt of the, the responsibility because it's like an admin error. He was mm -hmm. just saying, Register him in time. We brought him in loan back for Clyburn. I think he was at, um, and he's like, we didn't register him in time, so we played an ineligible player. So you know, for the games that he's played, we've had to lose the points for them. So it was hard because we'd won one of them and lost. Uh, we'd won one and drawn one. Sorry, so we'd you know that was four four losing um, out of those games, and you know it's straight away it just puts your head in a, and you know. A, can not help it and you know traveling up to Elgin didn't help you're in a three four hour journey and the boys are just, just talking about it. Aye. so you know there's no surprise I'm, I'm not saying it was a you know we're going to go up there and win anyway we start, it's always a tough game going up there but you know we obviously you know lost the game we, we played badly um and it just you know for there we, we slowly but surely picked ourselves up you know the, the form didn't drop completely we were still like won games and that we just weren't as as consistent as we were, so it definitely gave us a hit. Um, so, you know, it was tough when we finally got that push to get so close to them again, see it come down to the last game of the season, where, yeah. you know, if we win and they lose, we could have won the league. So, you know, if you kind of get that, you know, that hit, so, you know, about February mm -hmm. time, hit yourself yeah. back up and then you get another wee kind of hit in the last game where you're thinking we could actually still win this and we didn't. Aye. Um, and obviously, like you know, in your head, you're thinking, you know, you went to those playoffs. You know, are we going to win these? You know, you just think, is it just against us? That's kind of you, you can't help but think that as soon as you you have a pulse like that in a season, like a couple of hits. So, you must have that belief about his buddy. Like, I think the Edinburgh one helped. You know, we'd we'd always had one Edinburgh a year. Um, they had a very good team as well, like good experience. Mm. So like played to the level, like even beats and things. So they had, they had a good team. Um, and, you know, I think the first game was vital for us. We were at home. Um, I do remember us playing not away, and I do remember us playing very well. Um, we, we got the first goal. And I always think at that level, it, it's major. I you get the first goal at that level. I mean, and you mm -hmm. see that team normally go on to win the game or getting something out of the game. So to get the first goal and it just kicked on for them, mate. And, and I think just the call. So quick, it took so long for February to get back up to where we wanted, but mm -hmm. come so quick, you know, for that game, the boys just all of a sudden started thinking, like, right, that's the first half, we'll get a couple more to go. So we almost just seen its challenges each game. Maybe it wasn't long, so it, it, it was good, mate. Yeah, just to push it up. Mm -hmm. So the, the playoff final, how'd it go for you, then, mate? How'd you, how did you see it? <sighs> it's just like. I hate it, Dan, and hate, like, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you play, you play with it. I fought back up, I. I know, it's absolutely shocking to see that. <laughs> oh, listen, like, see when you play with Dan, right, like, I was the same. I loved that wee small pitch, Tony, I don't know about you, but see, like, having Aye. that, and, like, teams coming to you, you felt like nobody would beat you, because the pitch was tight, like, you knew how to play on it, but for some reason, like, see when I went to Clyde and I went to Annan, it was just, it was so hard to play on. I felt it so different from what it was when I was. Um, and I don't know if it was something that you'd get drummed in for the manager and how to play on that pitch or not, but it just seemed completely different. So, I mean, I just never had good experience every time I went down there. It was a really tough game, especially that season. I, I, I don't think there's always a goal in it or a draw. I think a couple of draws. So, never, they were all just tight games. Um, and yeah, it didn't work, work out too great for us the first leg. But a good day started, we got a penalty, good day missed. And then I think within 10 minutes, we, we Chrissy Johnson got and scored for, for, scored for Annan. So, uh, yeah, it wasn't the most ideal of starts. And, and see, to be honest, like, looking back at the game now, if, at the end of the game, there's, there's no denying that. I think, I remember the boy Wilson clean through and go missing a good chance. And... I think he's had another couple of one and ones as well that he's missed. If I remember right, Tony, he's, he's could have yeah. put head probably if he's if he's took the chances that, that game. Um, so yeah, it was we always knew we had a chance. It's basically we just one goal in it. We kind of come in with that. We're playing it one goal in it. If we get a goal, we you know we all come back in. So <sighs> second leg was just strange. I don't know how you feel about it, Tony. Do you know if you feel the atmosphere dead weird all game? Yeah. It was difficult for us. I see we had loads of chances the first leg. Uh, yeah, but 
obviously playing home, mate, like, you always feel confident. I like you said, mate, you always feel confident. Um, the only hard thing is, as you go, when you're going into a 1 0 in a second leg of a playoff, it's like, do you defend that 1 0 when you're going up, or do you sit back or do you play? Because then, like what happened when you scored the, the, to go 1 0 up and then obviously to equalise in the leg, the momentum's kind of shift to you, and then we're kind of in that mindset of, shit, we're trying to sit in, we're trying to sit in and hold the one leg but now it's one each and yeah. usually one up in that game and usually at home so it's it's difficult man it's always dodgy with it, the one no especially in the, the two legs seeing you look back mate like I thought you were playing team and I came in after the first half like and I thought they're doing yeah. it well I, 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 had not, I thought your game plan came in that game I don't know if it was Murphy drum, the team drum that he used to play that certain way and like, time tactics and things the team he's drum. just mate He's just so good, mate. See, he's a manager. See, like the stuff he'll do for to take the heat and for it, you to win, and he'll, he'll just tell you to like be horrible bastards, like just win yeah. the game. I always remember we played Edinburgh City, and I think we were winning or drawing a point. And they were desperate for the ball, but the guy for Peter Murphy had had the ball, and that Craig Thompson shouting, "Give me the ball, give me the ball!" And he's like, "What?" And then he looks at the ref and says, "Ref." And as he looks at the ref, he launches it off Craig Thompson's face, and then they're all going in uproar and all that, and. Peter Murphy's like I threw him the ball so nothing happens they're all up they put him off the game it's like he's doing like everything he can to put the obsession off your game like to try and not make them play especially as we obviously went from this tight pitch to a big pitch where you obviously love to play we knew you were going to play football mate so we just had to try and stop it um, as best as possible and again obviously going in half time now now you think right 45 minutes all you need to try and do as long as possible um, especially as you say we have wee Chrissy in the team who's capable of it, mate. He's fucking unbelievable. Untouchable on his day. Yeah. Um, so, that's the thing. When you look back, 45 minutes to go, mate. It's obviously, as you say, it gets to the stage where you're just going to throw everything at it. Like you did because you're a big, Aye. big fan base. So, we, um, I mean, the boy B. Banksy, he's a boy it's a, it's Aye. Aye. I think, on the lead up to that game, it, it was, it was quite inconsistent as well. Like, it was, Aye, so, I think it was in and out, it was just, the so that was a brave move for Danny to throw him in. Aye, aye. But I must have been, I think he changed it for us because we, we never really had that player. Like, and aye. Good passers of the ball and Goody was good. Aye. But we never had a player that, you know, one won maybe to some extent actually. But apart from that, nobody that really would get the ball in the wing, take a one chance. Aye. Aye. Like he was just doing things off the cuff and... Aye. That was an important factor in probably the overall game, thinking about it. Like he he definitely made a massive difference in the game. Um and let's say Tony, like I, I, it's definitely, you know, the way he's played, like I, I do admire it in some way. That's I just like to double check. I didn't know if like it was something that he'd done to or not. I thought just the way I played, I thought it was like it, it was so frustrating that it worked. Like, you know, that's Aye. what people are looking to do, and he's, he's done exactly that, obviously. Aye. You can touch on the goals later that we get, but up until that point, it's you know I, I, I get what you're saying. It's hard to what how do you go into that game? Do you can try and get a, a quick uh, goal on it, or you risk losing a goal too early. It's hard, isn't it? Like I know, mate. Especially when I'll say because we have to we because you Clyde Clyde they're a big club, mate. They had a lot of fans. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? Alan had a chance going up, so they brought a few. So we knew. If you've got an early goal, the fans were like, right. being at home, the mental would be with you right away. So we had to try and stop that and like get them on the back. And they were, we get someone abuse to be fair. So, but that's kind of Peter Murphy's good at that, mate. He, yeah. he, he's very professional, mate, in there um, in terms of what they do, tactics, and how they know, um, which always never worked out for me because I always remember any time you played Edinburgh City, I would play, even though I had the best season. I scored three goals in the last two games leading up to it, got to Edinburgh City, and he would drop me just because of how we seen that team and it used to annoy me but it used to always get a result and I couldn't really I couldn't really say it but he's good at that mate he's professional and how to look at stuff so I it was him he's basically done that and could try and play that way to try and break you stop you playing because obviously even from the back you said boys wanting to play and drive forward so we knew we had to do that and just try and stop it fluid and get into good in that and then again he went off injured and we think alright okay we've got a chance here but yeah. never never worked never worked out yeah, I enjoyed that wee bit else because you listen to his interesting he used to you're playing against each other like that. but uh, he's ended up winning it Martin was a celebration like after that mate he's been away for it didn't he aye so um, <laughs> just phone me back phone me back in five minutes when he's uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah I'm just I'm 
absolutely surreal, man. Like, it was just one of those games where, like, as soon as you got the first goal, I don't know, you, you just automatically just feel you're going to be at. So, like, all the boys were the same. And I must admit, like, there was even wee things that, that kind of, like, Tony obviously touched on and get taken off of but I, I thought even, like, him and wee Chrissy Johnson getting taken off as well were factors for them. Because I think at that point, he's, he's had, like, Nadi, I think. And he sell. I think he's really holding on at that point when we scored the equaliser. Right. And you know the base had Nadi up front to sell. So we were from there. We, we were just throwing bodies forward. Um, cause, you know it's a massive. Part. We had two defenders that were quite mobile, so we were quite. We were just going for it. And like Tony says, you know, get a penalty. That I don't know. I've not seen too much yet. Like, Aye, you know, no, it wasn't a penalty. It was not. It was not a penalty, mate. <laughs> Um, but I mate, see for there, like absolute blur but for there on man. Like you just had to like celebrate. <laughs> I couldn't even go as far to tell you what happened that night. The couple of days after it, day after, I'm getting tested for the boys because you do all the time. Seeing you get promoted, you always say, "I oh, will go away. We'll go away." Like my girl, if I go to school, uh-huh. we are just like it was like the Sunday, the day after being away and. Just Chat was going mental with we Mark Lamont just wanting to go away and try to get the boys to pick a holiday. So, mate, I was always the organizer. Like, I, they seem to think because I work in a band, really organized and good with that stuff. But, you know, like Christmas night, so I would arrange it. I did it for Tony this year. See the one you just went to? I arranged it for Christmas night out and I never, never didn't even go yet. Like, we just threw it on the boys' head and we we'll put the same with that. So I ended up, mate, I was up to. shocking. Shocking, no making the Christmas night out, by the way. I know, mate, I know. Working, though. I, told you, I don't know how many times I need to say that. I'm getting Ain't bored. Ain't interested in work. Work always gets chocolate at <laughs> the end of the year, mate. Ain't interested in work. <laughs> <laughs> Go for all the lads. Go for all the lads. How do you see things? How is things at Clyde now? Martin, obviously, the fucking COVID's holding his back to now, but how are you going this season? See, Fitbit's, I just feel Fitbit's tough to know, mate. Like, aye, it's, it's not right, isn't it? No, it just feels fake, you know, man. It's just... Aye, like, just now, like, we're getting told we're going back in February, and realistically, I just I, I just don't know, you know, where, where, where it's going. Like, I don't even want to have my hopes up and anything like that. Aye. It's just so difficult trying to, like, November time we're getting told to isolate as well. So just it's just felt constant stop start and see like training and stuff like that. It's so difficult to keep yourself properly mm-hmm. fit um, and actually right. play the standard that you want to be playing at. And the right me are saying it does feel a bit, you know, false at times it feels right. like there's no like you don't feel like there's going to be a prize at the end of it. Um right. the next opposite, I mean I didn't know it's still the day, like we we are kind of edging around those bottom places are now, which we do have games in hand that could change that, but you know, it, it just hit reality now that you know there is there is something there, and that, you know it's it's hard, mate. Like, I think everybody will be in the same boat, you know. Um, mm-hmm. interesting to see, you know, what they do. Um, but right. you know, my my contract will be up with Clyde at the end of the year. Um, All right. I, I don't know sure if you know, for that. I signed when they get promoted. Two year I signed. Um, so yeah, I'll be the end of the second year now. So you know, we right. we fit that. So now you just don't know how it's going to what's going to happen. So, you know, All just, right. See for Especially there. Anyway, aye. Well, aye. Obviously, but Tony, I sell you with Clyde, but you're free agent now, eh? Free agent, mate. Obviously, with Clyde, that's, the, that's another thing. Aye. I think a lot of people, if you are, give me a stick because they think that me and Chrissy <laughs> both signed for, for Clyde after that. Hence why we never performed in that last game. But aye. signed there for a two year deal, mate. And again, looking back, probably shouldn't have left when I did. I actually spoke to Goody Nat about it, and he's like, You've got a two-year deal. It's only January. It's too soon, and that. But again, I was in and out. Me, I went from having a season of my life at Annan, playing every week out left, scored fourteen goals, to coming in, starting off left. Then I was sitting midfield. I even went right back for a game. I went up yeah. front for three games. With Goody was injured, and then played up front with Goody. Then I was midfield. And it, for me, mate, after when I spoke to Danny Lennon and stuff, when I was signing with Chrissy, I had I had big hopes for myself, mate. Moving up a league. Less travelling than I was doing Annan, so I was like playing with wee Chrissy again. I've got Goody up front, like he says, with Grant and and stuff. I was like 100% I can score double figures in League One. Scored against Partick Thistle in the cup games, and I thought, right, here we go, I'm going to kick on again this year. Uh, 
played big club, uh, stuff like that. And just mixing about, mate, and it just wasn't for me, mate. Um, left, as I said earlier before, when McNiff was late, as usual. Uh, probably shouldn't have left, mate, at the time. Probably shouldn't have left, mate, left a wee bit too early. Uh, or I would have been in the same boat with a two-year deal. So, three in the now, mate. A nightmare. I just got my, my so- situation sorted right on the day, as they said. Football is getting postponed for three weeks, so hopefully uh, not I'm playing it's just the three weeks, mate, so I can get back to it and get signed somewhere, uh, even to the end of the season or whether it's a year, uh, 18 months, whatever, just to get back into it. I just want to get back to it, mate. See, when, you, when you're doing this and you're talking about the stories, and I mean, you just want to play football. Uh, especially you going, it, man. You're not injured or that, mate. You're not injured. You just want to play football. So mm-hmm. hopefully hopefully it's a three weeks and it can get sorted soon. I'm sure you will, mate. You play a pedigree, but in still getting yours in you mate do you know what I mean so keep yourself fit that's the main thing mate uh, that's it, no, we're all getting old now mate but just talking about me don't worry don't worry old fat fat okay man <laughs> uh, right lads all days right, sorted pleasure hope well, you enjoyed it pleasure mate nah, it was nah, a pleasure you're doing my lesson innit Ah, uh, it's good, man. Uh, it's good. good chat, man. Uh, good. <laughs> just, good think, just thinking about yeah, half my stories. All my stories I can think of is, is drinking. I'm like, fuck, I better not say all these, man. I can't think of drink all the time. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I've got so many stories for them battling about drinking, and I'm like, fuck, shit, I don't think I just drank all the way through my 17s and 19s. Aye, uh, you're, you're <laughs> deep, aye, fuck. Uh, <laughs> mate, I tell you what, right? See, before we, see you before we finish, I tell you one, right? My mum got married in Greece, right? And she came back. Uh, with like Uzo, is it Uzo? I think the drink oh, is. Aye, so aye. She, she bought me a, a bottle of that, right? And uh, I think me, Sharky, we were going out on the Saturday. I think we we're playing Rafe Rovers away. So we were going out, or I was staying at his or something Saturday night. So I just took it, took loads of stuff on the way to the Rafe Rovers game. Bust, bust to Rafe Rovers. I've got a big bottle of Uzo and a Lucas Aid bottle for drinking on the way back. The boys are like that. Try it, try it. It's like, smells like blackjack. So you know it's like under 17s or under 9 they're all sniffing it blah, blah, oh, and he's like try it so try a wee bit mate end up drinking like half the bottle before the game before the, <laughs> before game? the game mate. <laughs> <laughs> mate before the game everyone's absolutely off with it I played centre half mate and I, I, think, I think Rafe Rovers was decent at the use. I think we drew ah, two each and I played centre half and the boys, the boys used to slaughter me and say fuck sake you better drink before every game because you're the best I've seen you <laughs> oh <laughs> Uzo man they were the game remember the Montrose game last game of the season Nineteen. Oh, I don't know. Sorry, Robert. Nineteen. Tonic absolute rap before the Montreux game. <laughs> the nineteen, you said. Ah, mate. I think the way we done it, mate. I think it was I like. Don't know either. Joyce, you couldn't have been there. He was. Aye, I don't know. I don't know how we done it, mate. The night before the game, wasn't it? Sharky, was he not there? But he wasn't drinking. Yeah, I don't think he. I don't think he was there. I think he drank. You can't remind me, you know. Wasn't that ready? Nah, no. but I went to Tony's the night before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Playing FIFA or something. Ah, Actually, Nick. Or Nicky. Somebody else was there. Ah, uh, my mate. I think my mate Graham was there. Oh, he, he, never played football. he played three didn't play football. And I don't know why we done it, mate, like, for a game. And then we got absolute piss, mate. And the next day, mate, because obviously we had never got, I had to get a train up to the, the heavy, mate. And I'm like, oh, my God, man. <laughs> That's what I mean, mate. That's what I mean. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm like that. How I don't know how, mate. I tell you, right? I tell you another one involves drinking. <laughs> we, had a, we had a game against Cowden Beef, right? On a Saturday, or a, I think it was a Sunday we played on it. Sunday, so we had a, a uh, Sunday, so we had an engagement party on a Saturday. So I went to it's like, at the time, it's like Sharky's, Missy's, cousins, or something like actually. Wait, hers. I've got the, I'm like, okay, 17, so I've got the. The back trousers, the pinstripe shirt, no, that. Here we go. Wear shoes, right? So, <laughs> staying at Sharky's that night. I'm on, the, I'm on the bevy. Staying at Sharky's, all my football stuffs in the bag. Wake up the next day. I can't remember this, but I think Sharky said I was whited all over the bed. And that, right? Anyway, drive, driving in, all my football stuffs in the bag. Blah blah. blah. What the fuck? I'm like, oh, I forgot trainers, mate. So I'm going to football, <laughs> mate, with the tracky with black shoes, black dressing <laughs> shoes, right? <laughs> to make it worse, his mum his mom and his grand, to be fair, used to take us to football all the time because we never drove. So in the back of the, his mum's car, I think, and we're going to like, I think it was me and him, we were going to Beef Academy. We're playing Cowden Beef, so it's in Fife. His mum, oh. don't know why, drives to Ayrshire. So we're at Ayrshire and he's phoning Charlie. Oh, I remember that. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> where is it? And he's like, Beef Academy. He's like, aye, where are you? We're like, we're, we're in Beef. And he's like, you're in Beef. He went, Ah, we're in beef looking for beef a card. Uh, he's like, 
that's fucking <laughs> earth you it's cow and beef so we went the wrong place oh. had the wrong shoes so we went so we ended up going to the heavy saying we'll just go and watch under 17s bang Kenny McCormish, McCormish is a coach I turn up and he's like Tony come in <laughs> so I, I walk in and under 17s like here we go and he's like listen boys never ever do what he's just done he's just like look at that and he just outs me in front of all the young boys man I've turned there under 18s full track in the black lead and bad dressy shoes for an engagement party oh, I don't know how after that that's, that sums Kenny up because he never went and said to like Joey Shah the gaffer by the way he must have been out because oh, he had dressy shoes on he never oh, said to me <laughs> Oh, never a days, mate. I, me, I remember that man. I remember Charlie reading the text on it. I'll just say that the boys will laugh. Fuck. I was a TT's laugh. Fucking beef. I was all. Mate, I know, mate. That's summed up. The thing is, I was in the battle, so we never really know. But it's, thinking back, it's some sharky up, mate. He's probably said beef academy, his mum, and I ended up beef, beef academy, mate. So. <laughs> Doing the other shark. He's just stuck in the sack, that bitch. I think it came up, then. I'm beef. Aye, mate. So we went in the wrong place. We went to the other days, mate. 17s probably. and 18s, man. I didn't remember that, but part of me does this. Was that the other? You might I have been the change. I can remember Richie and that being. I don't know you must have been. I feel like I remember that there was a game. I mean, did I miss that game? I could maybe I missed that game or not. Was it an early game? I was, I was, I was, I was like a fucking 12 o'clock kick off through and counting them beef. One not five dollars or something. Probably because I wasn't playing. Probably how you won five dollars. <laughs> I'll tell you what, what McNair's talking about his first game, i tell you why. i tell you why you got a call up to the first team. Brannett, we won 4 1 against Clyde. Brannett scored a hat trick, I scored. And it was for your, I think, three goals were for your long throws, mate. Long uh, throws, that's oh, it. I go about them, man. Absolute, absolute long oh. throws, mate. Rory so Jim Chapman's probably, Jim Chapman's probably thought, long throw, oh, that'll do for the first team, and you go. Uh, I forgot about that, actually. I do it in the hippie, mate. That was a weapon, by the way. Yeah, I know. <laughs> 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 oh, brilliant, man. Brilliant, uh, mate. Uh, I remember yeah. playing against, we played Morton. We played Morton, hippie. I think it was it was the first season of nineteen to and we were getting beat one 0 And he had, he had a, it was like James Gray, he was our gaffer. And he was going off his fucking nut. Because every time he'd have thrown, their yes. team was going deep, 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 man. Aye. And not even just like 15 yards, like, like half eight is in the half. And half. half's like that, come percent of half, take the fucking 60 yard throw in, man. Aye. <laughs> we're cutting the right in the mix up, man. <laughs> Some that's what I was, mate. Stoke City in the SPSL Youth Academy, man. Brilliant. <laughs> Those are the days, man. Oh, Brilliant, it's man. been a pleasure. Aye, it's boys, been a pleasure, lads. No, boys. It.